I'm not getting All right, uh, once again, we welcome you all to Tamil Nadu's largest career guidance conference. And uh, we are starting in the next two minutes. Uh, in the meantime, I'd request the technical team to play a couple of videos so that we can start after the videos. I would request the technical team to replay the video again with the system sound, please.
All right. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, very good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Anivar Kum Malai Vadakangal. This is MC Tamilarasan uh, from 3G IRPS. Uh, so I'd like to welcome you all to Tamil Nadu's largest career guidance conference. That's why I said that Tamil Nadu is a great career guidance conference. It's day 5. October 31st, the morning to evening. We are from 9.30 to 6.00, Saturday and Sunday. That's why we have a big deal. Okay, we have a lot of work. We have a lot of evening time. We are having it from 3.00 to 6.00. As always, a disclaimer uh, for the want of non-Tamil speaking audience, since it's Tamil Nadu's conference, little bit of Tamil will also be used in between. However, we respect you and uh, we wanted to communicate everything to you. So wherever it's needed, definitely it's going to be in English. If at all, we switch out to Tamil somewhere, I would request you to wait for some time uh, with patience. Uh, instead of leaving a message in chat box asking us to continue in English, you can give us some space and time so that the speaker can switch back to English. So that's one request I'm giving to the uh, non-Tamil speaking audience. For Tamil speaking audience, another Tamil Nadu conference pair which is on the English level, I have been announcing now. We need to satisfy that. That means all India level across the globe participants are going to need to fulfill. That means we will have to do our best to get them to the English level. So uh, we will be having the balance between the English and Tamil. More than saying balance, I can say it will be more of English here and there, little bit of Tamil, uh, which we we would request you to excuse us. And this is World Book of Records event where you have uh, you get three different certificates, which we'll be announcing a little later. And after the first speaker speech, at the end of every session, I will request you to fill in the uh, session and the speaker review form. Uh, we'll be sharing the links, and also please do join the WhatsApp group if you have not yet joined the WhatsApp group. All the updates are being passed on over there. With that, uh, with that note, I would like to welcome the first MC for the day, Renu, to join me on stage to give the introduction for the first speaker. Over to you, Renu. Thank you, RK. A very good afternoon, everyone. I'm your MC, Renu Bala. So I would in introduce the coming speaker. He is Mr. David Nair. He is an author, keynote international speaker, personal excellence coach, and mentor, business strategist, entrepreneur, and philanthropist. David Nair comes with over two decades of coaching and mentoring experience, impacting the lives of more than two hundred thousand people across ten countries. In India, David has coached and mentored CEOs. Tier one, two, and three senior management in fifty of the top multinational Fortune five hundred companies. Some of the corporate houses that David has and is working with in India are Vodafone, Tata Digital, Health, Renault Nissan, Metropolis Lister, eBay, Royal Bank of Scotland, Service Now, and many others. David is the author of two forthcoming books: I Excel, Why for Success, which says Blueprint for Excellence, and Your Why, which states. If your dream is big enough, the facts don't count. David's definite major purpose within the next three years is to help create a mindset shift, heart set shift, and a soul set shift in one million people and their next generations by improving their lifestyle, thereby leaving behind a legacy for others to follow. With this note, I welcome you, sir. Hi. Good afternoon. How are you? Can I see some exercise on your fingers on the chat channel, please? Can I see some exercise? How are you? Can you just say I am great, great, or no, I am not great? Very quickly on the chat channel, we need you to start doing some exercises. Number one, number two, everybody sit upright. No slouching, no sleeping, no lying down. Have a pad and a pencil, or a pad and a paper. Everything that I'm going to share with you. It is not in many books out there. Most of it is my own experience over the last 25 plus years. Ladies and gentlemen, one key thing you will be wondering. Some of you are technical guys. Some are not technical guys. One of the key things I want you to understand is some will ask this question: Why? Why am I attending a personal excellence slash behavioral type of a function in an event such as this? The answer is very simple. The answer is very simple. Most of us don't understand, and I'm going to I'm going to use what we call an acronym here. How many know an acronym? Can you just put up on the chat channel? How many know an acronym? Yes or no? Very quickly on the chat channel. I need some activities and some feedback. That's the only time I can work. Come on, I need some activity and some feedback. How many of you know what an acronym is? I see. Yes, 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 yes. Any? Yes, 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 yes. Good. So I won't explain that. Now, this particular acronym is called a bar. 
Hey, guys from South India, this is not your Kurikar and Bar, okay? B A R, Bar. Your behavior affects your action, which in turn impacts your results. I'll repeat it again. Your behavior affects your action, which in turn impacts your result. So, doesn't matter what you do in AI, doesn't matter what you do in your technical front, doesn't matter what industry you're in, unless you know how to effectively communicate and effectively cross your ideas to people across the table, you are of no value. Do you get my message here? Your behavior impacts your action, which in turn gives you the results you want. So you can predetermine the results that you want. So ladies and gentlemen, effective from now, start taking notes. Effective from now, look at what your verbal and nonverbal cues are, meaning your verbal cues, what I am saying, your nonverbal cues, my action, my behavior patterns, my eyes, all of these are important in communication. Now, I know the host commentator or MC did make a comment apologizing to some of the South Indian Tamil Nadu people saying we have to speak in English so I'll be accommodating. I also like to add to that. I also like to add to that. The English language is not done because we need to do it. It is done because it is what I call a set standard for the business communication across all platforms. Whether you're in India, whether you're in Europe, whether you're in America, whether you're in China, English is the medium in which business is communicated. So fortunately or unfortunately, one has to accommodate that. The key element is, as a founder of my company called iXL, about 60% of our work is for new graduates who actually get recruited into companies. And you can see my portfolio in my brochure or get into my website or get into Google and just type David Nair, D-A-V-I-D-N-A-I-R, and you'll get all the information pertaining to me and my companies. In that particular organization that I've been asked to go and work, one of the key things is we only speak in English. Why? Because English is the medium of communication. I accommodate and I also express empathy. Type this word. If you don't understand, write this word and go later on and look in the dictionary. I also practice empathy for those that do not understand English. I have reduced my rate of speech lower and made sure I'm communicating at a level that most can take it up. So if there is any questions, write the questions and I'll answer all your questions at the end. Now, I spoke about bar, B-A-R. It is vital. It is not important, ladies and gentlemen. It is vital for you to understand the principle of bar and accommodate that in all of your practices every day. Everybody sitting upright? Good. If you're slouching, your energy level is down. If you're sitting upright, your energy level is up because your breathing is accommodated well. And when your breathing is there, oxygen gets into your system. And when oxygen gets into your system, guess what happens? You are a tsunami from inside. You get the message. That's why people talk about physiology and changes in patterns of change. That's one of the key areas we work with. The other thing I want to actually address at the start of this whole talk is, ladies and gentlemen, I am not talking to you. Uh, yes, I said that right. I am not talking to you. I will be using voice modulations I am talking to your subconscious mind. Hello. Some of you will be wondering, Adapavi, what is this guy talking about? It is a connect into the strongest powerful mind that you have called the subconscious mind or the unconscious state. That is based on voice transmission, voice frequency. So I will be modulating my voice some of the messages I'm saying to you, you might not understand now, does not matter. Just write the notes. You might be down at the shopping center one day or when the pandemic is lifted, or you might be in a restaurant and all of a sudden, ping, the answer comes to you. Has that happened to anybody where you leave an issue, you walk away somewhere else, and all of a sudden a solution comes? Now, that is what I'm talking about, okay? Through voice modulation, I'll be transferring some information to you that will come to you in time. Now, most of the journey here I'm going to talk about is the power of coaching. 
Why do I say that? You are looking at a guy today who is very confident. You're looking at a guy today, as the MC has said, who has traveled through 10 countries, spoke to and, and worked with in excess of 250,000 participants around the globe. Most of them are top managers, vice presidents and CEOs of companies. Yes, but this is not the same guy who was there 40 years ago. I got kicked out of home. I'm an Indian. I got kicked out of home at the age of 14. At the age of 14, my parents were so concerned, I used to be shy. I never could say boo to anybody. I would not talk. And my dad was being in the medical profession, mom being in the medical profession. They thought, what's going to happen to our eldest son? We better do something. So they kicked me out of home. They shipped me to a place called Australia to study. Yes. And in the course of doing that, one thing happened. I learned very early, I had to find successful people and get help. Now starts my journey. In Australia, what transpired was, I got paralleled and connected with one of my classmates' father, who was a finance manager for his own company, and he was an inventor. He was also a person who built a lot of properties. I loved his nature. I loved his approach to his kids and to me. He, at the age of 14 and a half, found I had some ambition. I had some fire. In Tamil, they say, Pasirke. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm speaking this in Tamil, but I'll translate for the non-Tamil people shortly. Pasirke. Guys, Pasirnda tam valkele mela varalam. Like my Tamil? Now, what do I say that to the other guys? If you are hungry, you can come up in life. Whether you are a Tamilian or non-Tamilian, the same value principles apply. So at the age of 14 and a half, this person called Uncle John took me on board. And guess what this Uncle John did to me? He knew I wanted to come up in life. So he said, David, you want a business? I said, yes. He said, let me show you how to start a business. At 15 and a half, I started my first business because I wanted to buy a home. At 17, he taught me how to buy my home. At 19, he taught me how to buy my second home. And thereafter, every two years, we were multiplying our homes that I was able to financially go away from Korea at the age of 34, 35. And I've been financially independent since then. I'm not saying this to boast. I am saying this because I had a powerful coach. I used to hang on to the coach's shirt and ask him, what should I do next? What should I do next? And his explanation was very simple. He would give me an instruction. I go follow the instruction. I have no ego. That's why I got so far, so fast. I am today the product of 14, 14, one, four coaches. Not one, not two, 14 coaches. This is what happened. Financial independence by the time I was in mid-30s. Every Indian parent wants their kids to get educated. So I went and finished my degree. I am a chartered accountant, a CPA. That's what they call us, a CPA. As a CPA, I joined an oil and gas company. By the time I was 25, I was the youngest vice president for the third largest oil and gas company in the world. How did all this happen? It is not because I'm smart. Nay, 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 nay. No, 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 no. It is because I was so stupid, I had to go and ask for coaches' help. Seriously. So learn the cardinal rule number one. Write in your book. Look for a coach, a good coach. I am telling you this. Most of us, as an example, might be earning 10,000, 20,000, 40,000, 50,000 rupees a month. What are most of our friends doing? They are also earning 10,000, 20,000, 30,000, 40,000, or 50,000 rupees a month. So we go to our friends and ask them, hey, Machan, hey, friend, help me. Do you think if you're earning 50,000 rupees a month, can he teach you how to make one lakh or 10 lakhs? No way. You want to make one lakh? You want to make 10 lakh? Go find a person that's making one lakh. Go find a person that's making 10 lakh and then go ask his advice or sometimes pay for it. Now, this is where this paradigm, I call it paradigm shift needs to happen. Most of us are frightened to do that. Why? Because it hurts our ego. Hey, listen, ego doesn't make you wealthy. Ego doesn't give you happiness. I can tell you that. There is one home for ego. E-G-O, the toilet bowl. 
Do you get my message? Ladies and gentlemen, that's my cardinal rule number one. Go lock yourself with a coach. Follow the bar principle. Behavior, action, response. Now, as I go through this, when I was retired by the time I was in mid-30s, I went up to my father and said, Dad, I'm going to go back to India. I was born in Malaysia. I said, I want to go back to India. He said, why India? I said, because India has made you successful and made me successful. He said, give them some money. I said, no, 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 no. If I give them money, this is what will happen. Tomorrow, they will still be hungry. If I give more money, their children will not come up because they will be hungry. But if I went them and showed how to fish, they learn how to fish. They can fish for every day of their life. And they can teach their children to fish. So in 98, I made my first trip into India with my purpose. This is the next topic I'm going to touch on. You have to have a big purpose in life. Write that down in your notepad. Purpose. That's my second book coming out. Your why. Only when you have a strong why can you come up in life. Your why is your pussy, your hunger. Now, 98, when I came here, many people said, my God, David, you're leaving a family. I said, I'm not going to leave that permanently. I'm going to make trips. Every, every year I make six trips, seven trips to Australia and India. And in so doing those trips, guess what? This is what happened to me. Very simply, I began to now make a contact list here. My first trip into India, I knew nobody, zero. I knew nobody, zero. Thank you so much for putting up the book. I knew nobody, zero. And this is what happened, ladies and gentlemen, as I landed in Chandigarh. Guys up north, I was in Chandigarh, one of the best cities up there. I love it. You know, it was a man-made planned city. Now, in Chandigarh, I spoke at a Rotary Club. I don't know why. They must have liked me. So they started organizing calls to all of the Rotarians pan India. And ladies and gentlemen, as a CPA, I then started to travel through India with two suitcases as a salesman. I started in Chandigarh. I went through 14 days, 21 cities. Chandigarh, Delhi, Dehradun, Calcutta, Isaac, Hyderabad, Bangalore, Chennai, Madurai, Coimbatore, uh, Trivandrum, Cochin, all over India. Many people say you should not take risk. I knew nobody. I took risk. To come up in life, you have to learn to take risk. Another point, right in your notepad, you have to learn to take risk. The risk I took was I left my family. I came to India. I trusted in what I call the universe. I trusted in God. I had faith. And within one and a half months of traveling around, talking, mind you, I never was able to talk before, right? Remember, I was a shy boy. That shy boy worked on this boy. The shy boy worked on himself. I won't be telling you what to do today because I cannot have time on 20 minutes to explain that. If you want to know more, the, the host has been very kind enough to put my books up there. The books will be on launch at the end of this month in Amazon. I Excel Wired for Success is the first book. The second book will be launched in December, Your Why. Both those books are printed here in India. Now, one of the key things that you're going to find out of those books is the practices you have to do every day. Coupled with that, you're also going to find another key thing. In that particular book are certain experiences that a lot of South Indians and North Indians have went through applying my principles when I used to do work and coaching them. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the power of what I am saying. Learn to take risks. Trust in the universe, and guess what? The whole thing thus opens up. Make sure you hang around the right people. Your machans and your friends are good, but hang around the right people who can uplift you, who can take you up in life. Now, in traveling around India, talking to Rotary Clubs, after one and a half months, a lot of the visitors who came to Rotary Club to listen to me talk were CEOs, were senior managers. And today I have a portfolio of about 50 to 55 top 500 companies in India that I coach their CEOs or coach their senior VPs. Lakka. Many people say, hey, I get lucky. he's got luck. Now, can you put on the chat channel what? And how do you spell luck? Quickly, on the channel, I want to see. I don't know how to spell luck. Can you put up there? 
Yeah, Satya, Lucky, L U C K, L U C K, L U C K. Ladies and gentlemen, write this down. Luck is labor under correct knowledge. You make your luck. You make your luck. One minute, my battery is running out. One minute. Yes, sir, that's a powerful session that's uh, going on. And the audience, yes, we can leave a message in the chat box. Uh, how is it going? How much you are enjoying Mr. David's session? In the meantime, let me also uh, share some of his work, what he has sent to me. Thank you. Yes, sir, you can start. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So, thank you, thank you. I'm so sorry, the battery just went off and I, I didn't realize it was turned off because we had a power strike earlier. Now, okay, that's enough. All right, maybe you would have got disconnected or uh, not worry, you will join back as he has turned on the power, he has connected his laptop on power. So yes, uh, please uh, keep sharing your feedback over here. In the meantime, let me take this opportunity to give the announcements like uh, this is World Book of Record events uh, where you are getting two certificates absolutely for free. One is for attending the Artificial Intelligence webinar. Another one is for uh, Career Counseling Foundation Certificate. Uh, you need to take a small MCQ test and uh, once you have done that, uh, or you'll be able to get the certificate. And the third thing would be the World Book of Records certificate where you can make the payment directly uh, to uh, London certificate, I mean, uh, World Book of Records organization. And uh, you'll be getting the certificate in 15 working days. And important announcements to mark your attendance. So you need to fill in the session review form at the end of every session. Uh, all you need to do is fill it twice. One is for the session. And the second one, you need to fill it for the speaker. So that, that that's a feedback form for us. And also that's, that marks an attendance for you as well. Also, uh, I would request you to wait for 15 working days for the WBR certificate because as soon as the session is over, people will start pinging us asking, I have not received the certificate. When I say 15 working days, which means exclude the Saturday and Sunday, which means it may take somewhere between 20 to 25 days or maximum 30 days. So I would request you to wait minimum for 20, 25 days, including the Saturday, Sundays. After that, you can contact our support team in case you have not yet received your certificate. Also, any sort of questions you have, feel free to leave it in the chat box and also uh, you are being added to the WhatsApp group. If you're not part of any of the WhatsApp group, please go ahead and uh, join the WhatsApp group. We'll be sharing the numbers over here. And if you're not yet registered, if you have not yet registered for this conference, please go to our website and register because most of you would have uh, received the Zoom link or the YouTube link directly. I would request you to register as participants so that you get added to the uh, WhatsApp group and you'll be receiving further updates from us. The registration procedure, go to the website uh, 3gmelife.com and you need to click Tamil Nadu conference and then you need to click register now. You'll have multiple options there. You can just click uh, register now and then uh, it will be asking for a few details where it will, where it asks for the referral code. You can put in our national leader, Dr. Maharaja's uh, referral code, which is 002 and uh, you can click it and then you'll be receiving the OTP to your email address, not your mobile. You need to check your email. If you have not yet found, you can go to spam folder or you can search as 3G and you'll be getting. So this is how uh, you get uh, registered for as the participant. Uh, also, if you like to become one, 3G, definitely we have a lot of uh, opportunities. Uh, probably uh, you can show us the interest. You can uh, message us in the WhatsApp and we'll be adding it to the uh, certain groups accordingly. So now I request the technical to team to play uh, videos uh, until uh, Mr. David joins here. Hello. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thanks for joining back. Uh, I, I am so sorry. I have had a power strike here and I'm back into battery. Can can we get continuing, please? Yes, yes, definitely, sir. Please okay, thank guys, you. I, I was explaining to you very uh, sir, simple. Sorry to interrupt. Uh, maybe uh, uh, will you be able to complete another 10 minutes or how much time you would need? Oh, no. Uh, about 20? Or maximum 15, yeah. Okay. Try, try, try your best, sir. That would be great. Yeah, we will do. Okay. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I asked you to put the word luck there. L-U-C-K. Labor under correct knowledge. You make your luck. You don't expect luck to come to you. Why? Because 
when you take risk, let me explain this principle, huh? When you take risk, when you have what I call synchronicity between your inside and the outside world, there is a sync. Some of the young ones will not understand this. I would recommend you go read the Gita, the Bible, the Quran, and you'll understand what I'm referring to. Synchronicity. When you have a sync, you will then understand luck happens. So please start looking at developing your insides. A lot of us have conf confidence issues. A lot of us have got challenges in relation to why is this thing happening to me? Now, some people would freak out like just now this power problems. No, they're all put there for us to get over. And what you need to understand is how can you get over it? The only way to get over it is to have what I call clarity in thinking. And that will come if you do your daily rituals. Early morning, you do certain things. At night, you do certain things. I don't have the time. As, as you heard, the host said, I have 10 minutes. I don't have time to explain all of that. I can only touch the top of these topics. So you now got to go in and start practicing that. Yeah, you can go and type into Google and look some YouTubes. But what you need is somebody who can guide you. That's what I'm talking about, getting the coaches. Now, there is going to be struggle in every journey. Be prepared for that. But if you have a design for life, the whole journey is going to be huge. I'll give you one small story. It's a young guy who came from Trinil Valley, South India, to the third tier college student. He came up. He was a BE engineering batch 2002. And he came to Chennai and he, and he stayed in a mansion and he used to travel from Chennai to a place called Avadi to build roads. He was earning 2,500 rupees, college graduate. Now this kid, this kid was living in the mansion. A lot of his friends were saying, Machan, you have to go and study C, one of the languages, you know? And he said, okay, I will go do that. He studied it. He got very good at it. Then he joined a systems company, software company. And his salary increased from 2,500 to 7,500, 2003, 2004. He worked there. My company has the privilege of working with that company and we coached and trained their people. My trainer was training one of these batches of people and he came from a Tamil medium school. I'm talking to guys who now have come from a regional dialect, okay? From a Tamil medium school. And this kid had no exposure about the outside world. Google was not even born then. He listened to coaches. At that training, my coach told all of the batches of students, if you ever do one thing in life, learn the art of reading. And he asked them to read, 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 read. That's how she used to talk to them. And this guy, after six months of the program, decided to continue and he went to one of the bookshops, bought nine books, came across. And one day while driving to his work, he saw this girl walking along the road and he hailed her down and he said, ma'am, you remember me? And he said, she says, no, I'm your first batch. Ma'am, you were like a Paitya Karachi, like a mad woman telling me to go read, 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 read. I went and bought nine books, madam. He's asking him the question, how long do you think it took me to read nine books? And she said, I don't know. And he said, nine months. Really? Yeah. And the next question was, that was one book, ma'am, not nine books. It took this kid nine months to read one book, 36 pages. Nine months, one book, 36 pages. You know what he did? He bought a Tamil English dictionary. He translated every word from Tamil to English, sorry, from English to Tamil and vice versa. Synonym and antonym. I'm going to recommend that book to you. Go buy that book. 36 pages. Skill with people. I didn't write that book. I don't get any royalty. It's somebody else's book. Skill with people. It teaches you how to connect with people. It teaches you how to talk to people. That guy from that one book used to then read one book a month, one book a month, one book a month. That same guy, we coached him. 2010, when I was in London, he rings me up and he says, David, he's in Zurich now, by the way. He rings me up, David, I will pay for your airlines to fly to Zurich. Can you come and spend a weekend with me? I want to talk about my life. And I said, no, I can't afford the time. If you want to come to London, he flew to London. 
He came to a Chinese restaurant. Under his arms, he had a lot of rolls of drafting paper. He unfolded it and he said, sir, this is my life. Can you help me? I want to become the president of this bank. 2010, we mapped out a 10-year plan. 2020, he was going to become the president. He didn't become the president. But you know what? In 2019, he was nominated as a top banker and he was nominated as a senior most vice president of the bank. Tamil medium boy from Trunel Valley. I know he will become the president of the bank in 2023. Ladies and gentlemen, luck happens to everybody. If you know, if you have a path, you will have luck. So please understand this principle. In addition to that, I want you to also understand, especially now when we have pandemic, um, the host, you can just nominate and tell me when my time is up, five minutes or three minutes or two minutes, and I'll just close off. Huh? Now, I want to share with you a story, another, another very strong story on struggles. Why am I talking to you a lot in stories? Because it's going to your subconscious mind. You will remember it a lot more. This is a story on struggle. Today, we are going through a lot of pandemic and many people are complaining, cursing, saying, why is this happening to me? So much people living at home together for 24 hours and they can't be there. They are all at one another's neck. There was a young kid who was watching a caterpillar come out of a cocoon. Caterpillar, cocoon, and he was coming out. The boy saw the struggle. And what the boy did was he went and got a pair of scissors and he cut the cocoon to help the caterpillar. So if God makes it very easy for you, this is what will happen. As the caterpillar was coming, he cut the cocoon. The caterpillar came out of the cocoon and it flipped and flopped. It couldn't open up its wings. Why? Because the struggle that pushes the caterpillar out of the cocoon is what strengthens the cartilage in the wings. And that's what gets the wings to fly. Nothing else makes it fly. That poor caterpillar, because it wasn't stretched, because the wings muscles cartilage was not stretched, he just flipped and flopped for three days and then just died. Appreciate the struggle that's coming in your way. Take it with abundance and then say there is a good thing happening and then map out your life, ladies and gentlemen. When you do that, you will see how this life works out. I think my time's up. I have a lot more to talk with you, but one other time we can do it. Any questions? Open for questions. Very quickly, one or two questions. Any questions? Yes, thank you so much, sir. Yes, attendees, so you'd like to shoot any questions to Mr. David, you can put it in the chat box. Of course, more than questions, we have been getting a lot of compliments for you, sir. Very, very oh, happy to see those Opa, thank smileys, you. the heart smileys, and also so many other smileys coming over there. All right, that is another question. Renu, would you be able to read the question for him? There was a question from Anjali. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, sir, the question is how to stay motivated when we feel low? Very good question. Hey, hey, host, give me another 20 minutes, okay? <laughs> I'll give you two minutes answer. I'll give you so a probably we'll give this a topic for you for your next session, sir. <laughs> Just I, I quick, yeah, I'll quickly answer this. But listen to me, ladies and gentlemen. I didn't cover this topic, and I will talk on this later if you give me a chance. Purpose. What motivation? I don't believe in motivation. I believe if you have a purpose, if you have your why, that's what the next book is. If you have your purpose, if it's strong enough, the facts don't count. I will tell you, and this is not asking for sympathy. Very honestly, I don't like living in India because I have the comforts in Australia. I have my family there. I'm stranded here because of the pandemic. We're waiting for a flight to get out. But, but, I love getting transformations in people. I accommodate, I accommodate the struggles. Today, for example, I'm not even allowed to do a, a, a talk with you guys with a power failure, okay? My daughter says, and she cries, she's 27 years old and she cries, she says, dad, why are you struggling there? Because my purpose in life, and this is why I am here, to create a mindset shift, a heart set shift, and a soul set shift in 1 million people such that their life can be changed and that of the next generations will be better. Ladies and gentlemen, when you have a strong purpose, nothing matters. So that young boy or young girl who made that question, that's what you do. You got to go find your purpose. When you find your purpose, no struggle is big enough. I can assure you that. And that's what happened. This is young Potikarapodian, I call him. 
that Trinil Valley boy, today as a vice president for third largest bank. His mother and father are so grateful. Ladies and gentlemen, I have to close down unless there's some more questions. Any other questions? No, sir. Uh, there are many comments, but no many other okay. questions. Thank you. Thank you. We hope been, yeah. we'll meet you in the next session. Yeah. And so, you, uh, sir, the session was really great. Really, I enjoyed a lot. And I hope many others also did. And I was not even able to move my eyes from the screen. Really, it was really great. And uh, so we have an e-certificate for you, sir. It is oh. a token of love to honor you. I love it. Thank you. Really appreciate it. Thank you so much. I truly appreciate it. And, and Nandini for all the organization that you're going through. So appreciate this is that. for you, sir. Thank you. Fabulous. Appreciate that. Wow. Fantastic. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Hmm? I'll just log out. Is that right? Yes, sir. Thank yes, you very sir. much. Thank bye you bye. so much. Thank you. All right, Renu, we can invite the next uh, MC. Let's open MC Charlie. So the session was really great. And to keep it to keep it on moving, to have new speakers with excellent energy, I invite uh, my co-MC, Charu. Charu, hand. Thank you, Renu. Thank you. Now we would like to move on to our next ebullient speaker, Ms. Nija Singh, who is a senior, also known as a senior teenager. She is a millennial in spirit with the benefit of hindsight, a professional speaker on the generation issues with 37 years of work and life experience as an advertising executive, an award-winning friction writer, a feature journalist, a teacher, a documentary script writer or director, a TV anchor, and a professional columnist. As a teenager, she enjoys golf, a, a lover of bicycle ride, and a high-spirited swimmer who can swim a kilometer at a stretch. She addresses India's never-before generation gap in the spirit of Generation Peacekeeper. Today, she's here to enlighten us on the topic, Generation Empathy Like Never Before. Ma'am, we are very much happy with your presence. Welcome to our conference. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I'll uh, start by making, I mean, uh, just sharing one thing with you that uh, I'll be getting off uh, line in about half an hour because I have something else fixed up. I'm so sorry about this. But the earlier speech was so beautiful. I mean, I, I would have loved to just carry on and on what uh, listening to that speech. But let me start now. Uh, I call myself the teenager because, um, you know, in 2013, there were two personal incidents that happened in my life that forced me to see that there is a disconnect, a huge generation gap between generations in India, particularly. Now, generation gap is happening in other countries also, but the generation gap in India is a little different. It's more covert because the family is still very strong here, but there are cracks going on. We can see them. Many of you sitting out there would have experienced that if not in your own lives, perhaps in the lives of your friends, your colleagues or extended family. Now, what were those three incidents in 2013? Now I'm from an Air Force, I'm an Air Force wife, an Air Force veteran's wife. And in Barmir in 2013, a MiG-21 aircraft crashed. Now a MiG aircraft costs several crores of rupees. I don't know the exact cost and more expensive than the aircraft was the young pilot who was flying his life. He was 25 years old only. And what was the reason for the crash? Social media addiction and sleep deprivation. It is unheard of. I got married in 1986 to a MiG pilot. And as soon as my children were born, my husband picked up his pillow and went out of the bedroom because that generation, the pilots used to sleep at night. There was no smartphone next to them on their bedside table. And in the same year, 2013, my daughter, who graduated from an Ivy League college in India. When she left home for the five-year course, we were so confident. She was the president of the student council. She was a state level boxer. She was an MUN delegate. She was a speaker. She was a Kathak dancer. She was 101 things. 
And then she goes to this professional college. And five years later, when we go to pick her up, pick her up during the graduation, what do we find? We find a stranger. Right under our noses, our daughter became a stranger to us. It happened. It happened. And horror of horrors, a little later when she went to Google Hong Kong as a public policy intern, she started slipping into clinical depression. We considered ourselves, I, Neerja Singh, senior, I considered myself a progressive parent. I thought I knew what being broad-minded meant. I thought we had given our children freedom, liberty, and that we were trusting them. We were doing what the world was telling good parents to do, which was have faith in your children. But then we had not made allowance for the environment and the internet and the other messages the young people get today. When my daughter went into depression, it, it took us almost four or five years to get out of that low as a family. It has huge costs when a young person in a family or an office or an organization goes into a low. The costs are huge, huge. And when I was getting out of this low with my daughter and my entire family, that is when I started noticing, understanding that there was a big disconnect around me between the older generation, my generation and the next generation and the generation after that. So I am called a boomer in the West, in the US, but in India, I would call myself the pre-cabler because the economic reforms came to India in 1991. And that is when the earlier generation that was brought up not to consume changed. Suddenly, Indians started looking smarter. The cricket team became more um, aggressive on the cricket uh, field. They were, started wearing branded, smarter clothes. There were no clothes available off the shelf when I was growing up. That is when I started studying this, you know, the subject of generation gap. And from that came my, my conviction that today, today, the generation gap is not like any other generation gap before. Many people say, oh, generation gap is just one of those things. I mean, even we faced generation gap. No, 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 no. That, is, that was a different generation gap. This generation gap is much, much more severe. It's deeper, sharper, more painful, more visceral. And what are the reasons? The reasons are that all the changes that happened in the West over 70 years have happened in our country in the last 10 years. Your All India Bakchod movement, your um, Article 377, your um, Tinder, your dating apps, the sexual revolution in our country, uh, women's uh, em well, emancipation of going through the ceiling, breaking all the, all the earlier limitations. Now, these have happened one after another, after another, after another, after another. And Ram Chandra Guha, the noted historian, has said that India is going through five revolutions right now. I believe the most painful right now is the social revolution. I can't see all of you, but I'm sure some of you out there are perhaps nodding their heads and agreeing with me that, yes, there indeed is a very, very tricky, tricky, sometimes very painful social revolution going on. Now, why generational empathy? Like never before. The first reason I said, because the generation gap is like never before today. What is the other reason? The other reason is, look at me. I'm 58 years old. My hair is gray. I'm, I'm a member of what is called the silver tsunami, which is taking over the world. They say in 2050, the number of people who are above 60 will overtake the number of children below the age of five. So there is literally a silver tsunami overtaking the world because people are living longer. There is longevity, there is better health. They take greater care of themselves. And I also believe that my generation in some ways was fitter because we perhaps faced different kinds, of, you know, our struggles were different. So. Perhaps also because we met our milestones on time, we developed or uh, kind of grew up with a sense of confidence that uh, helped us to just face the failures or minor, minor discomforts. 
in comparison, the generation today, I feel is more fragile, more delicate, because their struggles are different, not because they're weaker, not because we were better, but because their struggles are different. So the first reason I told you the nature of the generation gap today is different because the changes have come as fast. And you know they've, they've come in the manner of a pressure cooker almost. So that's number one reason. And the number two reason I just shared with you is that silver tsunami effect. Now, third, what happens when silver tsunami doesn't retire? What happens when people who are silver go on and on? Well, you have five generations at the workplace. Earlier generations, people lived at home. They no longer retire. Many of them don't. So you have four, five generations working together. Now their compulsions are different. Their motivations are different. Their working styles are different. My generation is more careful with passwords. Maybe Generation Z, Generation, uh, you know, it's a generation that's called Zoomers, 1995 onwards. Of course, Generation Alpha is coming after that. But the younger generation is not as careful about their passwords. They might keep their passwords on a sticker somewhere on the laptop itself. They're not so careful. My generation was very careful about keeping work and personal different. But today, that line has blurred. There are a lot of young people who do their office work on their personal laptops. So these are just to share two very small examples. There are other multitude of examples. For instance, um, uh, you know, expectations from marriage. Today, the expectations are very different. In our times, expectations were different. So again, this um, the fact that there are so many more generations now working together and there are people like me who are tech savvy, who are who 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 don't mind. In fact, they who welcome being reverse mentored. We don't mind learning from the young. Uh, I, for instance, can dance the salsa. I dance the foxtrot. I do. I've cycled from um, Delhi to Chandigarh with the youngsters, or I learn Spanish language. And my classmates are 19 years old, 20 years old. The, I mean, the, the oldest uh, student of Spanish at Instituto Cervantes, New Delhi is probably 25. I bring up the average age. Those are my classmates. And because I'm interacting, interacting with them, I also see how we respond to the teacher differently, how we do our homework dis differently, how we approach the entire, entire exercise in a very different way spirit. I also see that the struggles are different from mine. So this is the third reason why generational empathy is the need of the hour. My friends, my dear friends sitting out there today, there are families in distress. Now we are good Indians. We don't like admitting failure. We hate telling people that there are problems at home, especially family. Family is sacred. Our izzat is sacred, family honor is important, keeping up the image, keeping up uh, appearances are very important to us. So as culturally, we are not comfortable admitting or sharing our problems. And the worst part is we don't ask for help in time. I'm talk talking with reference to the generational problem. What is happening in families today? The young adults, you can argue, I'm, some of you perhaps may feel that what I'm speaking of is applicable only to the urban environment. But remember, Indian society is an aspirational society. We are all trying to become better. You just heard the speech earlier, the motivating speech. And what was that mo speech trying to motivate you to do? To become better, to rise in life, to earn more. Papa kehte the, bada kaam karega, bada hokar mera naam karega. That is the maksad. So we are an aspirational society. And when we are a society like this, whatever is happening in the urban area or what you call the top, so-called privileged or top layer will percolate. It will come down. So what we are experiencing today in maybe the the bigger cities, the metros, uh, is also happening in the two-tier and three-tier.
frontier cities in a different way, perhaps to a different degree. There are the Bantis and the Bablis in Saharanpur, in Muzaffarnagar, in other smaller Jumri Talaya, other smaller cities who are fleeing homes. They're leaving homes and coming to cities and coming to towns. And they're not particularly concerned about what is happening back home. They may not have plans of returning also. They may be looking at um, all kinds of things, going abroad or um, there's so many options available in terms of work and uh, means of earning. So to come back to what I was saying that this generational empathy is very critical today because it is causing, in some cases, estrangement between the generations. There are young people who are breaking communication with their parents or were just stepping out, not wanting to stay with their parents. In some cases, it becomes so severe that there, you hear cases of young people falling into depression or mental illnesses because they are, they are exercising some life choices, let me put it like that, which they are not able to talk about at home. They are not able to share it with anyone. They are scared when they go home and say that, Ma, I feel a little woman, a little man. I'm not sure what my sexuality or what my gender identity is and they know what their reaction is going to be their parents are going to rocket jettison through the through the you know the roof hi ram oh my god what are you saying i'm going to die what will people say what will nani say she'll have a heart attack oh my god oh my god i'm about to die these are the kind of reactions so when young people, young adults, teenagers, 23, and by the way, my friends, all of you sitting there, teen years today, according to the World Health Organization, they're starting at 10 and finishing at 24. I'm not saying this, the WHO is saying, from 10 to 24, because young people are taking longer to launch and become independent. They are figuring themselves out, many of them. So now when they come home and they know that they cannot communicate with their parents and the parents are finally, ultimately the primary support system even now in our country. Friends are okay, friends are there. But when there's a crisis, friends don't have the resources to help. They don't have the wherewithal to stick around. So they are going to disappear, they may. Now, when you cannot communicate with your parents, openly enough, there is no psychological safety at home. What happens? The pressure begins to build. There may be guilt. There may be a sense of shame. There may be a sense that the parents or the family is disappointed in you. Why, for instance, a young man who has studied in a law school for five years and now wants to become a scuba diver instructor and goes and shares this with his family, you know what the reaction is going to be. They're going to say, why did you waste five years of our money, so much time and this kind of training and now you want to go and open a stall called Bhukkar? These are the, these are the pulls and pushes that are happening right now in families. Children wanting to break free, not being able to communicate with their parents. And that leads to a lot of, lot of conflict, which in some cases is causing young people to use, well, substances, alcohol, marijuana, smoking up, staying up the night, binging, binge watching. Why, why do they do all this? Uh, gaming. PUBG is one. There are several other, several other games young people play. Of course, this is a younger, younger lot plays, but they do. I had a classmate who used to tell me uh, of his experiences on PUBG. Now, when they're not, when they're not able to, uh, you know, share in an environment of safety, children 
use other means to numb themselves. They are in pain. A lot of young people sometimes are in pain and their parents find it difficult to see that, to acknowledge that. They, and they are not making, perhaps they're not able to make the effort or a crisis has, has not hit them and forced them to see these things like I was forced. I'm not a superior parent, not at all, but I was forced to inform myself. I was forced to educate myself. I had to do, I had to do my homework. I went and watched as parents, my husband and I went and watched Ishq Zade, for instance. I started reading books. I read 41 books on this subject. And even now I'm reading a book called Stoned, Shamed, Depressed. It's a book on the lives of teenagers in Indian urban schools. I would recommend that book to all of you. Do get a copy and read it. It's been written by an NDTV journalist. The book talks about how things are. And my contention is that a lot of adults in India, a lot of parents are unaware. They've got their blinkers on, their chashmas on. They will not remove their chashmas and see what's happening. And I am, my message is not, oh, look what's happening and stop it. No, my message is, look what's happening, understand and empathize. Try and, try and gauge, try and appreciate what these challenges are doing to the young people. And the fact that the young people cannot communicate with their parents is a big source of tension for them. That's my contention. Now, one more thing that's happening as all the content perhaps uh, all of you who are out there may, maybe this doesn't apply to all of you but uh, many of us today we are consuming content which was created in the united states the serials that we watch are american friends used to be very popular some time back the music that we listen to a lot of it is american some of the movies that we watch is american the books the books that we study are academic books. A lot of that literature comes from other, well, so-called developed countries. They are developed. So not enough material has been created to give the local narrative, to give our context, our context. So what happens is when the children study and they evolve and they grow, they assume that a certain picture which is being presented to them from other countries is the norm. Actually, it is not the norm, but the fault or the lack here is with us, the academia, the thought leaders, the, the entrepreneurs or the business folks, people like me, speakers, journalists, that we have not provided a credible enough alternate to what our children are consuming today. A simple thing, let's take the apps, talk about Snapchat. How many of the adults here on this panel know what exactly the Snapchat app does? Do you know how long a snap can last? Do you know that young people are sending their nude pictures to each other, thinking that is going to disappear in 10 seconds, not realizing that there are ways to capture that picture and blackmail and there are people out there who will blackmail them and are blackmailing them today what happens today for instance when a young a teenager let's say a 13 14 year old who's on instagram her picture is somebody out there applies the deep fake app and morphs it and puts it out in an inappropriate manner what does that young person do I would like to ask the parents sitting on this panel, if your child came and said, Pa, there is a picture of mine out there on Instagram, which is inappropriate, how would you react? How would you react? On your reaction will depend the life of your child, literally. And I'm not exaggerating. I'm not exaggerating. This generation gap that exists today in our culture, in our society, can, can and is leading to loss of lives in some cases, mental sickness and loss of life.
these are the reasons i particularly feel very strongly that generational empathy needs to be studied needs to be practiced needs to be mindfully and consciously utilized and spoken about talk about it bring it bring it all out all the things that you are hesitant about that you feel ashamed about that you feel nervous about that you feel um, unappreciated for or you feel you're disappointing people around you speak up to young people i would say speak up share and to the older people i would say you are a mighty generation only if you can absorb all of this without criticizing without judging without offering solutions without sharing your life lessons oh we used to do it this hum to lalton ke niche padhte the we used to walk so many kilometers to go and study yes those were fantastic things you were a great generation unfortunately the pressures today are very different i hope i'm making sense i can't make out i have not looked at the chat box what are the what are the reactions there i don't know but i would like to continue to one more theme of this subject one another very important aspect of the generation gap now you know in many cultures especially indian culture uh, i'm a i'm from punjab i must also share that i'm a very hungry speaker right now because i'm observing the karwa chauth fast i don't i'm not sure if it's observed in other parts of the country in delhi it is and uh, i've been hungry since morning but i want to share one more thing with you you know in our culture there's a lot of mother 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 is very responsible for the children's upbringing and it's the mother whose identity is closely closely tied up with how well her children are doing whenever as a parent you attend room full of people one of the next you know they say hello how are you and uh, what's happening so what are your children doing is one of the first few things people ask you where are they and then they gauge if your children are in good schools they decide that this is mother is doing a good job she's a good parent if the child is depressed or if the child has some problem with um, alcohol they'll immediately say that the mother has not been a good parent that is usually the reaction and therefore in our culture one thing that will slowly changing and will have to change this generation is forcing it we don't let our children individuate i'm getting close to my time i'll just take two more minutes we don't let our children individuate we hang on to them even when a child is 40 45 he's still my bachcha whether he's a sweater pehna ya nahi yes uh these 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 concerns come up and uh, but for generational empathy part of generational empathy will have to be this slowly and steadily we are getting there because parents like me and my the, the child of mine like me are forcing us to observe the boundary there's a boundary between the older generation and the younger generation which must be respected so this is the case that i wanted to make on generational empathy i think i am cross my time uh, if there's any more question will somebody guide me please and then i will see my bye bye and leave you all thank you so much hello anyone there uh, as ma'am thank you so much it was a uh, one uh, really wonderful session and uh, you speak a lot about the gap uh, generation gap between uh, the people like us and the people like your people your age generation it was really a wonderful session and the audience is there any questions to shoot up you can also ask questions we go for our one two two to three questions now yeah apart from questions we are getting a very good feedback it's a great session wonderful session thank you very much uh, charu i could have uh, i mean obviously there's no i mean it goes without saying that i would have loved to carry on and on but yes mom um, mom thank you so much mom thank you for sharing your valuable information with us and actually you have explained us the real scenario on the society due to this generation gap it's a real eye opener for us thank you mom thank you so much 
as a token of love in return we would like to present a e certificate for you please accept it ma'am thank you charu thank you thank you ma'am thank you bye 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 thank you now i like to hand over to mc rayan for yeah. the next yes uh, thank you charu uh, i am really uh, happy to introduce this person and he is a certified nlp trainer author certified life and business coach founder and director excel hr for focuses areas are awareness choice creation and purposeful life his mission he helps uh, individuals executives entrepreneurs create breakthroughs in their life career or uh, business by challenging their existing thinking process and belief systems he also helps them to access their own inner resources to create their vision co-create strategies for achieving that vision and bringing in their own commitment for execution as an accountability partner he helps them to uh, gently but firmly move out of their comfort zones and explore their full potential he is a engineer turned a trainer and a coach more than 15 years of corporate training experience and more than 1000 days of corporate training programs and more than 1200 hours of coaching individuals executives and business owners and also the corporate leaders learn apply and teach from the experience his his philosophy uh, fascinated with the nlp models and frameworks and he keep learning and teaching at more and more deeper levels uh, he is an author of four books and he is interested in haiku writing as an experiment in self awareness without any delay i would like to call uh, ram subramaniam ganapati sir to on the dais we welcome you sir sir actually you are unmute you have to unmute yourself okay so uh, thank you mr rehan am i audible now yes sir yes sir much more audible yeah, am i visible now yes yeah, sir yeah please okay thank you so uh, thank you uh, for this uh, wonderful opportunity and um, uh, i think i have been disabled the screen sharing can i share the screen i have a ppt yes sir sir one second i will be giving you the access so uh, before the access is enabled right um, uh, yes, sir, again enabled. right uh, thanks for the organizers for uh, giving giving me this wonderful opportunity uh, to share right uh, my perspectives about um, one of the most important uh, skills that is required uh, for an uh, for a leader for an uh, for a executive for a manager whatever it is uh, this skill is uh, uh, considered to be one of the most uh, uh, important skill particularly when the individual wants to grow uh, in his career Uh, or even build his business to greater and greater levels. So, uh, assertive communication framework—that's what we are going to see today. And uh, uh, since the time is very limited, I want to touch the basics. Right? Once uh, we are able to touch the basics and not go much deep uh, and make it very more complicated, uh, we'll just try and work with the basics around and try to get as much value from the uh, from the session as much as possible. so yeah lots of things have been said about me right uh, yes um, uh, i have been basically a uh, mechanical engineer uh, i was a happy being an engineer but right really wanted to become a trainer and a coach and uh, uh, a big part of that uh, i owe to nlp the neuro linguistic programming uh, i find it more entrepreneurial in nature trying to bring out the best trying to understand yourself trying to explore yourself more and more so in that way i have been benefited and then some 12 years before i i quit my engineering job and started my own corporate training organization now we have grown it a team of around uh, four people we are doing a lot of training programs pan india so basically my creed uh, is about building awareness uh, 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 we are more of a, i would say uh, reactive beings right lots of unconscious processes keep driving us and if you want to take more control of our life at least a reasonable control of our life we need to become more aware of those unconscious processes that are driving us most of the times we may not know why we become angry most of the times uh, we, we may not know why we become very impulsive and why we speak those words which we regret later so yes uh, there are deep driving drives uh, and we need to become aware of that if we want to control that the second thing is uh, being free right a victim is defined as a person who is not able to have any choices whereas uh, a real freedom is about uh, having much more choices more uh, personal choices and so that will be my creed uh, and the third is uh, uh, yeah fun is very important in life at the same time uh, the life should be more purposeful so that it becomes more meaningful 
So awareness, freedom, and purpose have been my creed. I have been trying to live by these principles. So we'll go into the topic matter, the four types of uh, communication styles, right? I wouldn't go much into uh, communication. Maybe I'll just ask one question uh, to stimulate the thinking process. Uh, how do you know that your communication is effective? What is the evidence that we know that we are communicated effectively. Anyone if can just um, unmute themselves and answer that. That would be great. Feel free, nothing is right, nothing is wrong. So what is the evidence of an effective communication? Or you can, you can do it in chat box also. Listener's response, anything else? Thank you, uh, Renu Bala, anyone else? How do you know that our communication has been effective? We want to can unmute the action taken by the receiver. Yeah, that's also phenomenal. That's great. Any other perspectives? I'm trying to just tap into the group wisdom. Research, fantastic. Yeah. Anyone more response? The audience respond and motivate others to follow. Divyarun, thank you. Thank you, Divyarun. Thank you, Karunayan Shahidi. Yeah, obviously, right? Okay. So. <clears throat> The ultimate evidence of an effective communication is that we get what we want. Ultimately, that is the evidence. We need to get what we want. That is the evidence of an uh, effective communication. Uh, I normally feel that children are very good in the communication department, right? Because children normally get what they want. And if you can really take a deep look into that and try and understand how is it possible for a children, I'm talking very generally, children generally get what they want. So if we can go drive slightly deeper and try and understand how is that they are able to get things easily, whereas uh, it might be difficult for the so-called adults, like, like people as you may be wanting that promotion, you may be uh, wanting that particular jump, you may be wanting that particular support from a subordinate. Those things may happen, but sometimes that could be big challenges. We may not be able to really get what we want. When we really, uh, when you really take a deep look, that's why we say ch a child is a father of men, right? We can learn very many things from children. And if you're really able to track the process in which children are able to get what they want, one thing would stand out is their ability to come out with the behavioral flexibility. They, they are so capable of coming out different types of behaviors, when to ask father, when not to ask mother, and how to ask with father, how to ask with mother. So many behavioral flexibilities are very much right uh, found in children. Uh, I also personally believe as we become older, uh, our communication styles become very frigid, right? That could be one of the more important reasons for us, uh, which could be stopping us from getting what we want. So this small session would be a, a way of investigating that, how flexible are we uh, in our ability to communicate, right? Okay. <clears throat> Right, you might be very aware of it, but what I'll be trying to do here is uh, I'm trying to give some metaphors. Uh, uh, I love metaphors because uh, metaphors uh, could be uh, very useful for us to understand uh, slightly abstract concepts. So the aggressive style, very simply, uh, which simply says my rights are more important than your rights. I am the guy here. I am the king here. I am the person in authority here. So I'm more stronger in terms of whatever it is, right? In state of physical strength or intelligence, whatever it is. And uh, you are somewhere down the line here below me. So my rights are more important than your rights. So uh, the metaphor that comes here is the bulldozer, right? I'm sure you would have seen a bulldozer. Uh, without any least concern of anything in front, it simply graces things around and gets its way, right? That, that is called as an aggressive communication becoming very strong with a very loud voice, very strong tone with powerful pumping gestures. The mere sight of a very aggressive person could uh, uh, make uh, the subordinate get scared. The second type of uh, communication style is a passive style of communication, which simply says your rights are more important than my rights, right? It's like a candle, right? The sacrificial person, who feels that the other person's rights are more important uh, and he feels that he can, he or she can compromise uh, has his or her own rights. So the metaphor that could come in mind is the doormat, right? You would have seen that, right? People come, just wipe their feet on the doormat and then without any further care about, further care about the doormat, just simply pass by. 
and the doormats are there, right? Uh, they could be uh, the ideal metaphor for a passive communication. Uh, the third uh, important communication style is a passive aggressive style, which is really very interesting. Uh, this comes from a person who is really not to uh, is not able to express uh, this the uh, whatever his needs, whatever his wants, and so he has to come out with a he has to be aggressive, but he can't directly afford to be overtly aggressive. So he goes for covert aggression, and. Uh, it's very simple, right? I will sabotage your rights indirectly. I may not fully cooperate. Although I may say yes, but still inherently I'll not lend my full support and I will, whatever means uh, uh, there might be, I will ensure that you are not able to get what you want. I have very fought a very uh, subtle form of very covered form of uh, aggression. So it's uh, the metaphor here is doormat with pins. So for the aggressive person, the metaphor is the bulldozer. For the passive person, the metaphor is the doormat. And for the passive aggressive person is the doormat with pins, right? In, in adverently, if someone wipe their feet on the doormat, right? Maybe they get their uh, uh, feet clean, but they will also get very strong, painful pricks. So that is the metaphor for passive aggressive. And then the fourth uh, uh, one thing, the right, uh, the, that we are going to talk about more today is a certain form of communication, uh, which simply says uh, both of our rights are important. Your right is also important. My right is also important. Let's just try and arrive at some mutually beneficial choices. Right? So let's see what else is possible. If your way, it's neither your way nor my way. Let's see is there either way is possible. So uh, dear friends, if we ask this question, what would be the characteristics that are required to sustain this attitude? Let us arrive at some mutually beneficial choices. Can you come up with a few qualities that would help this attitude sustain? You can type in chat box. Please let me know what are the qualities, a few qualities, one or two, that you think will help this particular attitude. Your rights are also important. My rights are also important. So let's investigate. Let's explore. Let's try and see what other ways are possible. So anyway, please type, what do you think are the qualities that are required to, uh, to uphold this particular assertive character? Anyone can unmute or what do you think? Willing to discuss, fantastic. Thank you, Satya, willing to discuss. Any other qualities? where uh, we are able to create more choices, neither your way nor my way, it's okay. But could that be any other ways? Uh, being amicable, that's okay. Agree to disagree, yes. Thank you, but on a more deeper level, uh, open communication, yeah. But still we are uh, really, uh, really delving on the superficial layer. Can we go slightly deep, uh, be more specific? Win-win situation. Listening. Yes, this was a word I was really looking for. Listening to the other person's point of view, right? Trying to postpone our judgment, trying to stop the background clutter we have in our own minds. And for at least a few moments, try to listen with the other person and empathy, right? Fantastic. Those are the two words which I was really looking for. Trying to understand the map of the other person. That's what we say in NLP. Trying to understand the map. Trying to understand what is happening on the other person's mind. And for that, right, we need to first shut down our own uh, uh, chatter, the mental chatter, try to minimize it, and try to really listen and putting our judgment in the back burner and trying to listen and empathize and get the other person's perspective. Fantastic, right? So the ability to listen and the ability to uh, empathize with the other person, right? Try and understand uh, how painful it could be for the other, other person in some way would help us more considerate and put us in a powerful state in which we can create choices, right? More choices. So normally, right, uh, uh, argument uh, is about who is right, right? You are right or I am right. Argument is about who is right. And a discussion is about what is right, right? And the third one is a dialogue frame. Uh, that's what uh, uh, I'm talking about more here. 
the dialogue frame is neither who is right is neither what is right and uh, the dialogue frame could be what could be right for both right and uh, one of the important abilities of the human mind is some uh, uh, creativity uh, uh, when i say uh, our ability to create more choices it's about uh, our ability to create more choices bringing in more value to the table right uh, do very uh, very form of uh, i would say our positive negotiation and creating more choices and then finally coming up to that that could be the best possible solution for the both persons involved on both sides of the table so that's about assertive communication as required so as you rightly said the qualities that could be required is really trying to listen so if we can catch ourselves when we are not listening that is an important uh, uh, thing right uh, at a very practical level whenever we are able to understand right that's why i said we need to become aware we need to catch ourselves uh, becoming aggressive or becoming passive so if we are able to catch ourselves in that particular moment where we stop listening and our voice raises uh, right our uh, our facial muscles constrict and we come up, come up with pumped up gestures that is the moment if we are able to catch ourselves at that particular moment and become aware that i'm being driven taken control of my emotions we can create a very small gap there and from that gap we can just ask ourselves uh, am i now able to listen can i take a moment can i take a pass now and am i able to listen so yes uh, the metaphor that could come very powerfully here is the is the golden compass i'm hope uh, i'm able to communicate right because uh, uh, it's not even necessary that we remember all these things right if we remember the bulldozer if we remember the doormat if we remember the doormat with the pins and if we are able to remember the golden compass right which points out a mutually useful direction and then that could be really rewarding okay that's great so thank you dear friends so we'll move ahead uh, and by the way before we go that uh, by no way i am saying uh, aggressive is never useful in no way i am saying passive is also no, not useful right because in nlp we, we we say that every behavior is useful in some context every behavior is useful in some context maybe aggressive behavior could be useful uh, when you are taunted right when you are irritated by a repeating salesman a sales person comes to you again and again bye 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 so at that time maybe a degree an appropriate degree of assertive uh, uh, appropriate degree of aggression could be very useful right when a, uh, when a very very uh, when a sales person keeps on irritating us maybe a certain degree of appropriate appropriate aggressiveness could be very useful maybe when there is a context when the relationship is more important than the results in our life let me repeat when there is a context in which the relationship is more important than the results then passive behavior could be very useful even a passive aggressive behavior could be useful to make your point across to a not listening person in your team so by no means right based on the nlp principles we believe there is a positive intention behind every behavior and we also feel that uh, every behavior is useful in some context so yeah we need at times we need to be aggressive we, we need to be passive we need to be passively aggressive but there is a very big chunk right which could bring us huge rewards and that is our ability to be assertive in nature so i'll just move ahead uh, we'll talk about right the four benefits of being assertive later on i'll give you some very simple tips right for us to uh, try and become more assertive authentic expression without undue emotion suppression right this is again very important see what happens when we are passive is we keep on right we feel bad but we we don't re really express our feeling bad and so we keep on suppressing that it builds up builds up builds up and at some point of time it might vulcanize it might may it might create a uh, 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 very turbulent let out so that could very much be possible and it could really collapse uh, and could really forever break relationships that is one problem when we are passive so authentic expression uh, uh, when you are assertive you move away from being passive and you freely clearly and very consciously express what is that you really want and when we do that right the unwanted stress is not being built so authentic expression with, uh, without undue emotion could make us less stressful this is a very important point 
So normally we become very stressed when you are not able to really express ourselves. Maybe it's because of a very difficult boss or a, a non-supportive colleague, right? Or a, or a subordinate who is not really uh, willing to do what we require of him. So when we are not really able to express of how we feel, that could keep on building us and that could over a period of time uh, really become big. So the authentic expression uh, and when you are really assertive, we are very authentic and that helps us become less stressful. That I feel is one of the most important benefits of being assertive. And the second benefit is when we realize that we are really able to express ourselves powerfully, there we are able to become more confident. So when you are really authentic, right? When you are really able to assert ourselves, right? You'll be able to feel the surge of confidence. I'm really confident. I'm able to express myself. I am, I, I'm say internally representing myself. I'm internally referencing myself. I speak out who I am. And when I do that, my confidence takes a very positive surge. And when we do these two, right? When we are able to really explore uh, and express ourselves very powerfully, we have a peak in confidence levels. And that could naturally will improve our self-esteem because when we speak with confidence, people listen and people respect. And when people listen and people respect, they may not agree with what we say, but still they listen to us and they respect us because we are communicating authentically, we are communicating confidently. So they respect us and we could also improve our self-esteem. So the third important benefit I personally find in uh, ours being assertive is yeah, I, I respect myself because I have communicated what I what is that I ever want. I have not been inauthentic. So that use that makes us respect ourselves more and sense our self-esteem can rise. So here I want to talk about a disclaimer. Being assertive, will that always get what you want? Not necessarily. There is no guarantee that whenever you are assertive, you will get whatever you want. Not necessary. But it will tremendously increase the possibilities of what of getting what you want. So this we need to have in mind. The fourth important benefit is uh, absolutely right. When you talk with um, uh, authenticity, when you talk with confidence, when you talk with a level of uh, self-esteem, right? You are able to really influence people. So these are the four important benefits, right? Uh, uh, I find uh, in being assertive. Let me quickly give you the three steps, share with you the three steps and uh, uh, then a few steps. So first step is becoming self-aware. Very, very important because one statistic says 95% of the advices are, are not followed. So howsoever a person advises you, be assertive, be assertive, be assertive, that's not going to happen unless we become aware of ourselves. Unless we own up our own responsibility of being assertive. So no matter how many, how many of our superiors, how many of the wisdom literature in the world ask us to be really assertive unless uh, we become very self-aware of what is the pattern. It could be aggressive pattern, which may not be useful in the long run. It can be a passive pattern, which may not really help us down the line. It may not be a passive aggressive pattern, which makes us people don't trust us. So these patterns do have their negative results. We become more aware of this. And we can choose to ask ourselves a question, is this how I want to run my life or run most of my life by being aggressive and being afraid? Because when I'm aggressive, definitely I'll create more of enemies. In the moment, I may be getting what I want, but still I'll be leaving lots of enemies back behind. I need to keep on looking back at my shoulders. Is that what I really want? Or by being really passive, taking lots and lots of garbage without not fully expressing myself. How long can I sustain that? How much can my self-esteem go for a dip? And yes, certain times we might be, right? We talked about every behavior is useful in content. Uh, every behavior is useful in some context. But continuously, if you are passively aggressive, right? People somehow sense that. The biggest uh, uh, con the biggest negative effect of being continuously more of passive aggression as people understand that and they don't trust us. And they may not give responsibility to us. And growing up in a corporate ladder is more about taking more of responsibility. 
So that may not happen for a person who has passive aggression as his dominant behavior. So becoming self-aware, what am I, what is that I'm doing? What is the pattern out of these four? What is the pattern that I continuously keep on running? Or maybe what is my favorite pattern? We need to ask ourselves. And unless we ask ourselves, right, we may not become self-aware. So self-awareness is becoming aware of the patterns that keep on running in us dominantly and the results that we are getting out of those patterns. And then practicing self, authentic self-expression. So one of the important technique, very interesting technique, right? It's very useful technique is using I feel statements. All you need to do is put these two words, I feel. And then start your sentence with that. And being authentic about that. I'll give you some tips, right, as we go down the line. Third is identifying what is that you want and using I want statements. Very simple tips, dear friends. Very simple tips. Something so easy. Using I feel and I want. So when you put these two words, I want, dash, I'll give you some examples as we go down the line. So these are the three steps which I finally, uh, which I really find much useful at a more practical level. Becoming self-aware, identifying the suppressed, uh, suppressed emotions and giving a name for it. Becoming aware, what is the predominant emotion right now I'm having? When you are having a heated discussion or you're scared, do you feel disrespected? Do you feel confused? Do you feel irritated? Do you feel frustrated? Do you feel let down? You need to become aware of the emotion. In fact, emotional intelligence, the first step of emotional intelligence is our ability to identify a specific emotion and give a name for that. And then just using the I feel statement, I feel scared. When I are having this discussion, I feel scared. I feel confused. I feel really irritated. I feel let down. When I use, when you're able to use that I feel statements, right? That's how we start becoming assertive. And then I want, follow that. I want you to respect me more. I want you to give me some time so, can, so that I can think about it. I want you to give me more choices. I want you to inform me beforehand so that I can get myself prepared. Uh, I hope you are able to understand the power between these two, these two statements, the I feel statements and I want statements. So using the big table tone, the tonality again, very important. Now see, you can use, I, I want you to use I feel statements. I want you to use I want statements, but with the right amount of tone, neither a passive soft tone, nor a hard aggressive tone, the mid level tone where there is a combination of requirement and respect. So I wanted to practice this particular tone, maybe in front of a mirror or in front of, a, uh, in front of a, in people who really have goodwill for you. Maybe you have a particular issue with a person, you want to be assertive with him. I want you to script it down. What is that you are going to say? You can script down I feel statements. You can script down I want statements and practice it in front of the mirror or with a friend and check the tone. The more we do it, the more it becomes easy in the particular context when we come with an either aggressive or a passive aggressive behavior. Okay, any questions, friends? So uh, let me reiterate, uh, right, becoming aware, identifying the emotion and giving a name for it because it is, it is very important. You need to identify the emotion. You need to objectify the emotion that you have and give a name for it. Scared, I'm confused, I'm irritated. I feel dull. I feel not valued. I feel not respected. Whatever the emotion, objectify it and give a name for that and then say to the other person. And then what is that you want? With the appropriate tone. Right, that will really help you become uh, very, very assertive in nature. So any questions, friends? We have any questions?
Uh, please let me. Yeah, now we have one question. How to stop negative self-talk? Okay. So slightly away from the topic, but anyhow, right? I can give you a few guidelines, right? Uh, I love metaphors. Uh, the metaphor that comes to my mind here is an elephant, right? Let's take an elephant, which is, uh, that is a mahout uh, going behind the elephant. Uh, let's assume the elephant is going in the marketplace. Both sides, there are shops. The elephant will try, use a trunk and pull one object from the shop, pull another object from that shop. That continuously happens. So our brain is also like an elephant, very powerful. And it always seeks engagement. And our brain has been programmed to look for negatives because that is how we are evolved, right? Look for dangers. Initially, right, when we were right, prehistoric men, we were living in not so safe situations and, and our brain has been programmed to look for danger and spot danger as early as possible. Maybe the set, same pattern is running. So how does a mahout prevent the elephant from grabbing objects? What it does is give a small stick to the elephant to hold. And the elephant holds on to the stick. So one way is to, right, because the mind cannot function in vacuum, if there is nothing for the mind to hold, it will always seek something negative. So one of the stick that you can give the elephant is your goal, right? Very positive, very powerful, very inspiring goals. If you are able to give your mind very strong, purposeful goals and ask the mind to think about the strategies, the mind keeps engaging and there will be no space and time for negative beliefs negative thinking, right? That would be one uh, uh, one small tip that it will like. Focus on the goals, focus on the strategies, but don't think that I should never have negative thoughts. Uh, that's not practical, that's not feasible, that's also not good. When you want to, when you are crossing a high, uh, road with traffic, I want you to really be negative, right? Look for any fast coming vehicles and then take a calculated risk. I don't want you to be positively oriented, feel that nothing will happen to you, when you cross a very high traffic road. I don't want you to do that. Hope I am communicating that. Yes, so that was a wonderful answer for everyone. And it's a really a very good and eye-opener session for uh, particularly personally for me. It's a really wonderful session. And also we are getting uh, so many feedbacks like it's uh, all thank you so, so much. It's a wonderful session. So we can see the chat box. Uh, it's kind of bombarding with the, the feedbacks. Okay. So uh, just moving over uh, one small uh, uh, one small thing which I just want to share. Uh, I have a very interesting PDF. I couldn't share that here. Uh, it's about identifying the four type of communication styles, right? So yeah. you, can, you can just look at people, how they behave, and you'll be able to get some idea. So if anyone is interested in that, you can just WhatsApp me. I'll send you the PDF, right? It's a small uh, cheat sheet. It's a one cheat sheet. You'll be able to get all the uh, patterns that are coming from people. You'll be able to understand where this behavior is coming from. Uh, right, and moving ahead, right, uh, you can, for more details about my programs, you can visit my website, transnlp.com. So thank you, uh, and wishing you all the best. Over to you, yes. Mr. Rehan. Yeah, yes, sir. Very, very thank you so much for sharing your uh, contact details. I think uh, people, you can take a screenshot or you can note your the numbers on the mail ID. So, and uh, uh, from our side, we have to give you a token of love. It's an honor. So can I have a technical team to show the certificate? So we have an e-certificate, a wonderful e-certificate for you. So here oh, is it. Hey, thank you. Thank you, Rehan. Thank you very much. Uh, thank, you, sir. thank you so much. And uh, I'd like to call upon uh, the next MC, MC Tamarasan RK, to introduce the next. Thank you so much, Rehan. Actually, I'm not going to the MC to introduce the speaker. Rather, I just want to come inside uh, because he's like a part of my family. I can say uh, he's a Rotarian. Uh, when we say Rotarian itself, we know that uh, they are uh, young at art and also young at action. Uh, they do a lot of things in spite of the age factor, in spite of the busy schedule, because most of the Rotarians, they are in the business, they are in the top portion of the companies. In spite of all those things, they get themselves involved in a lot of their activities, uh, serving the society. This is what happens. So it's always my pleasure uh, in introducing the Rotarians to any of the forums whenever there is a conference or a meeting. Uh, we give preference to someone from the Rotary Club. Uh, in that way, I, I feel really happy and proud to welcome this particular Rotarian and uh, thanks to uh, Rotarian MC Nandini Aravindan to have suggested his name because recently she met him on, in a virtual event and uh, she was impressed with his speech and the way he delivered and the content, what he delivered. 
So we thought that we would definitely uh, need his support in this Tamil Nadu's largest uh, career guidance conference that's being organized by 3G IFPS. So it's my pleasure uh, to have introduced him over here. So I would request MC Charu to join me on stage to welcome this particular rotarian onto the stage to deliver his next 20, 30 minutes talk. Thank you, Tamil sir. Now we would like to invite our next eminent speaker, Mr. V. Vineet Swaran, who is a chartered engineer and started his career as executive in an export company in Bangalore during the year 1976 to 79. He shifted to Uthangarai village and was doing agriculture for 10 years. During that time, he started a food preservative company called NPV Products, where Tutti Fritti was manufactured. He, he have traveled to many countries as a package tour organizer. He joined in Rotary during 1993 and rose to the level of president, RI district chairman for road safety, RI district chairman for AIDS awareness, and presently with Rotary Club of Alandu, serving as the club director for international services. He also is also a sociology postgraduate and a commerce graduate. Now easier to enlighten us on the topic, how Rotary International helps for your dream career. So we are very much happy and honor honorable with your presence, sir. Thank you. Thank Let's you so much, Charu. Office. With that, I'd like to welcome a Rotarian YB Swaran sir from Rotary Club of Alandu to take over the stage with this powerful presentation. Thank you, Tamir. I hope you are able to hear me and also you are able to see me. And yes, sir. And we can see that you're energetically are standing and doing the presentation. That's really great. Uh. That is my presentation. <laughs> that is how I, I like to you know, be present here. I used to stand and uh, give the narration. And my oration will be interesting if I stand and give. Otherwise, what will happen is sometimes people may sleep and it may tend me also to sleep. So to avoid all that I stand and do. And this is a very wonderful opportunity, I tell you, because all the time you know, in the auditorium, there will be a good crowd and we'll be watching them, uh, their reactions, and uh, we'll be uh, accordingly speaking about. But here, you know, I'm able to assume that there is a very good crowd here and I'm able to speak. It is a good opportunity indeed. I'm thankful for this pandemic situation giving me an opportunity like this not only to me, to everybody present and uh, on the oration field. Before I start, I just would like to say about one small incident I happened to witness with my friend who is a Rotarian. He's a pastor district governor. We had been to Japan and uh, you know, he always uh, used to address the people in their language first. Like uh, some of our uh, politicians, you know, they speak when they are Tamil when they come from north, or they go to speak in uh, Gujarati when they go there. Similarly, this past district governor, what he used to do is, he will gather the uh, language from there and he used to say, my dear gentlemen and ladies or what my dear ladies and gentlemen whatever he wants to say he will address them in their language when he had been to japan what happened he said tore nitsu jonko suru hoho and josi yo tore nitsu jenko suru hoho all the audience there in the uh, auditorium were uh, grim faced. They were not saying hello and all, no, or shaking hands or clapping, nothing. They did not uh, find it comfortable for them. And he started his talk. He was confused because, you know, usually when he goes to a country, he addressed them in their language first and then he starts his speech in English. This time, when he did this, nobody was uh, happy about his uh, uh, speech, and, but they started listening to his uh, speech. Of course, his speech was wonderful. Everybody liked it. It was, went on for about one full hour. Finally, when he finished, everybody felt very happy, stood up, 
gave a standing ovation. And after that, he came out with his friend, who is a Japanese. Right? And we were also there with him. Slowly he asked, why when I said, these people were not accepting my a happy addressing. Then the man who came with us, who is a Japanese, he said, you addressed my dear ladies' toilet and my dear gents' toilet. So they did not like it. So my dear friends, why I in mentioned this here is because we were able to listen a very tight, heavy subject program. And I want you all to come out and feel happy, little relaxed. And again, I'm able to see how tight program scheduled here in this conference. I'm happy. Youngsters are now coming to the groove that they are going to enjoy it. The Mahabharata Yuddha was there. Dhritarashtra does not have his eyes. Sanjaya was to explain. Yuddha is in the Kurukshetra. Sanjaya was sitting nearby Dhritarashtra and he was explaining, like, you know, cricket commentator, he was saying, this is what is happening. Arjuna was frustrated. He was leaving his uh, Dhanus, all that he was saying. And this narration with this uh, blind uh, uh, Dhritarashtra was able to hear that. Here, when he was able to say everything, Sanjaya was able to say everything, Dhritarashtra was able to understand and Sanjaya was listening through one Homa Kunda. Homa Kunda is one square rather thing where, you know, there will be uh, a lot of wood fire coming out. And uh, with that, he was able to see. Here this intelligent, artificial intelligence started. Nowadays, we are having TV to see. In those days, with that itself, like a TV, he was able to see that war field and he was able to explain what is happening there. So artificial intelligence is not new to us. It is since so many thousands of years ago, it started. Secondly, when we think that we'll have to buy something in the, about 20, 30 years of time, we'll have to go to a shop, Tell them that we are going to buy this, bargain, buy it, bring it back home. No, just a phone call away. Sometimes you know, on the online, you are able to get it. The revolution is not going to spoil. You don't have to worry because when the population grows, the demand grows for us. We'll have to get everything in some time. Now, I want to connect all this with Rotary. I'm going to Give my PowerPoint presentation here. I request uh, PowerPoint presentation was disabled. That mean? Yes, sir, you have to access, sir. We can train. No, it's okay. Ready, no? Yes, we can train. Yeah. Now, I just would like to explain as how we are. Are you able to do that, sir? Yeah, I am able to do it. Here, see, I am from Rotary Club of Hollandu. You are able to see five of us. The first one with a good smile. Sir, sorry, sir, we are not able to see the uh, slide. Can you click the share? share yeah, option? please, please, please. Can you stop the share and try again? Okay, one second.
So just click share and then select the uh, PPT file which I've already kept open. No share, that's my All right, sir, no problem, sir. I'll share it from here. You can continue and let me open the share here. You can start talking. I'll do okay. that for you. Which I, I may not be able to see, is it? Yes, yes, you'll be able to see that. I'm just opening the screen here so that you can see that. Yes, you can see the screen now. Sir. Yeah, correct. So here we are able to see five of us. The first gentleman with a blue color shirt is an engineer. He is a structural engineer. And, uh, uh, and the next one is our pastor resident. He is a consultant. The third one is a musician. Fourth is myself. And fifth is a government servant. Here, why I mentioned all that is because we are not from the same avenue of activities. We are not business people altogether. Some of them are business people, some of them are employed, but still we all get united. We are all having one mind of thinking, talking, and ha having our happiness with being together. The Uh, Tamir, can I be scrolling or I'll let inform you? Yes, I will do this. I will do the scrolling, sir. You can see next once you complete the slide, I will scroll the next one. Yeah. Now I would like to explain you how Rotary is going to be useful for all the youngsters. The four-way test. Once you know, Mr. Herbert J. Taylor, during 1932, he was employed and he came out and he started his own company where utensils were manufactured. In his company, there were about 250 people working. And uh, during one uh, situation like this pandemic situation, the company did not have any opportunity to do business. And uh, they were almost in the bankruptcy stage everybody neighbor to him or his uh, colleagues or other Co uh, business people were saying that uh, this is the end of it. And uh, banks were not giving them any support. It all happened in Chicago. Then what happened? He was sitting, thinking about what best we can, uh, he can do it. And he came out with four way test. He started writing several ideas, and finally, this came out to him. He said, is this the truth? Is it fair to all concerned? Will it build goodwill and better friendship? Will it be beneficial to all concerned? The okay, next, next. And when he said, is it the truth? Many people came on the same day, you know, he wrote this and he kept that in his uh, uh, table, uh, in between the glass and his table, he kept it and he wanted to follow this. That whole day, first question, is it the truth was not acceptable for him? Because none of the papers which came to him were not acceptable, it is not truth. And he continued that for about 60 days. Then also, the, his subordinates and his employees, everybody started saying, why do you want to adopt this? This is not the truth and all. In the business, you cannot follow all that. Take these papers out. Let us do as we were doing. And let us try to borrow money, and then we will develop it. But he had a courage. Sometimes it may work out all right, he, he thought. And he immediately said, no, I am going to keep this and it is going to be helpful to me. After 61st day, he, he sworn papers, which he rejected as it is not truthful, came with truth. He was saying that he can do the utensils for a competitive price, maintaining the quality and all that had started happening. The second one, when it was truthfully done, 
it was also fair it was you know for a competitive price he was able to do it and uh, it was good for all concerned with these two factors what happened his consumers were happy they started rushing in buying with good will and better friendship he created slowly his business developed and within 10 months time from the place of 100 rupees of profit he could make 300 times more than of what he was earning so this became a real important information which he could give it to rotary for business people and also for other entrepreneurs we are sticking to this and it is useful even today we are maintaining it and then next slide interact program next yes the new generation service program it is an interact program among the rotarians in their family the children should also be brought into the information that they should know rotary how to serve people and how to serve above self so right from their childhood it is taught and this shows the new new generation on the service program the next slide youth service program for the youngsters we have youth service program sorry uh, tamil shall i be able to do it otherwise no 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 sir i need to change the slide sir you can just tell me next slide and i'll keep moving it ah uh, then youth exchange program youth exchange program youth exchange program is among you are supposing in our club we have youngsters uh, different uh, age group of youngsters in between 18 to 25 and if they want uh, if uh, another club of a different country wants us to exchange youth exchange program can be done and we can send them there to their country and our people will be there under uh, uh, group study exchange or whatever the other programs they plan and thus it will be useful for them the youngsters are getting benefited with this program the next one is rotary for peace the rotary for peace is you know the family members there are uh, i think that you can have the slide as it is i'll just keep uh, speaking otherwise i i'm going to talk about uh, the rotary which started during 1905 and uh, it was a successful one started by rotary rotarian paul harris fellow and he was an advocate he started with three more friends who was one was a tailor and uh, two other people business people got together they started meeting once in a week in a particular place and they wanted to develop the community in those days during 1905 the development globally was not much everybody had their own reservations and in our country we had only agriculture other than that we were not having any other business there in uh, illinois us when paul harris fellow started this they were joining more other members also in a short span of time and they were able to come out with several other clubs slowly they started introducing some of the uh, clubs internationally can i have the video please yes sir please this is the rotary foundation video you can please have a look at it just a minute sir video is getting loaded
I hope you all enjoyed this uh, video. The idea of why I wanted you to see this video is because Rotary is a wonderful organization where you can get your employment, where you can get your business done, where you can get your people move around for happiness. <laughs> Social service is possible. And, uh, you know, we are able to mobilize pond restoration. Rotary Club of Alandur is doing wonderfully well with a lot of other social activities like green, go green projects with us or more. We are having matching grants. Matching grant is a wonderful uh, opportunity in our city. Earlier it is matching grant, now it is called as global grant. Supposing I have a lot of contacts and I have some fund to promote and get one hospital here in our city to do service free or for a smaller price. And uh, the fund which we have is not sufficient, then a sister club from a different country also will join with us and they will also share their, profit, uh, their uh, contribution. And with that, we'll be approaching Rotary Foundation and foundation will be able to give us up to 80% of our desired amount. And what will happen is, with that partnership, we'll be able to start one hospital here. And that will be useful for the poor people, needy, and uh, you know it will make us to enjoy the needy people further. So Rotary, during 1905, started, and we have my, unfortunately, the slide which I wanted to show on my own was not uh, been done. There is some problem in my system. However, uh, I hope you all enjoyed my uh, speech and uh, you can collect my phone number and also my email ID from Tamil. And if any information you want further, you can contact me. Please join in Rotary. Rotractor, you can become. And there is a RILA program. RILA program is, it is for Rotary Youth Leadership Award. Any youngster can join in that. There, there will be a conference. And Rotary Club of Alandur again is going to do that. It is in the month of January we are proposing. You can contact our club. They will be able to help you out. And with that, you know, you can have international contacts developed. So with this, I conclude. Thank you, my dear friends. Thank you. Thank you so much, Vaitiswaran, sir, for sharing your valuable knowledge with us. Uh, these programs from Rotary Club will surely help us in many ways, sir. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you, it, thank you sir. In return, as a token of love, we would like to present your e-certificate, sir. So please accept it. Hope I will be receiving it by mail. Yes, yes sure. Yes, we will yes. send it by email and also in WhatsApp as well. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, sir. Thanks for accepting your invite, sir. Thank you so much. Yeah, please. Thank you. Next, I would like to hand over to the next MC, Nivedita. Thank you so much, Sharu. Now I invite Sam Vishal, super singer, as the name derived by his participation in a singer hunt show. Sam Vishal is one of the super singer challengers season seven. He is based out of Chennai. He got out a fantastic remark on group choice round and he, had, he was referenced as a characteristic conceived entertainer. Sam Vishal rocked the stage with a mind blowing performance during super singer seven finale and the songs chosen by him were of the highest quality and everyone encouraged him by showing their mobile light. He even got a standing ovation from Anirudh and all the other judges. Music director Anirudh even said that he is a fan of Sam Vishal and says he has a special place in the music industry. He won the third place in Super Singer 7. We welcome you Sam Vishal sir. Over to you sir. All right, welcome Hi. Sam. We bring uh, Sam on spotlight. And uh, Sam, can you tell us a Q&A format? Sam, can you tell us a question? 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 
ஹாய் எல்லாருக்கும் ஒரு பெரிய ஹாய் ஃபர்ஸ்ட் ஆஃப் ஆல் இங்க இருக்கிற எல்லாருக்கும் அண்ட் தேங்க்யூ சோ மச் என்ன இப்படி ஒரு ஒரு முக்கியமான ஒரு ஈவெண்ட்ல வந்துட்டு என்ன ஒரு பார்ட்டா இன்வைட் பண்ணதுக்கு தேங்க்யூ தமிழரசன் அண்ணா நந்தினியா டாக்டர் பெரிய தேங்க்ஸ் இங்க இருக்கிற எல்லாத்துக்கும் என்னைய ஐ மீன் நான் வேணும்னு கேட்ட எல்லாருக்குமே ஒரு பெரிய தேங்க்ஸ் தேங்க்யூ தேங்க்யூ எவ்வளவு சொன்னாலும் பத்தாது உங்க எல்லாருக்கும் தேங்க்ஸ் thank you sam okay now first of all audience ko and sorry and other state audience please excuse us if the interaction is more of tamil we'll try to have it in english also little bit but if it goes more in tamil request sure, sure, sure. uh, because for the want of tamil audience uh, it would be more of tamil and also whenever we book uh, such people like super singers or celebrities engalukku epovume or pakku pakku irukum varuvaangala illaya last minute shoot irukum out station irupanga signal illa therthirupanga in fact innikku avada ipo i'm returning to chennai from erode Exactly, that's what I want to say. <laughs> One second. Okay, in fact, everything is on track. So, he's traveling back to Chennai. Okay, Sam, without further delay, என்னுடைய முதல் கேள்வி எல்லாருமே அந்த பேஷனை நோக்கி போகணும் அப்படின்னு சொல்லுவாங்க School days, college days, you can learn how to do it, engineering, doctor, etc. But how did you find your passion in singing? How did you find your passion in singing? Or how did you were able to identify that? Actually, in school, uh, by both standards, I started singing gospel songs. I started Christian songs. Then, in school days, I started singing gospel songs. I started singing gospel songs. ரிலேட்டிவ்ஸோட மேரேஜில் வந்து பாடுறது ஸோ அப்படி தான் இப்போ காலேஜில் தான் வந்துட்டு ஐ ஸ்டார்டட் கோயிங் டு காம்படிஷன்ஸ் காம்படிஷன் போனோன்னே தான் எனக்குள்ளார ஓகே நம்ம ஏதாவது பண்ணணும் மியூசிக்கில் அப்படின்னு தோணுச்சு ஃபஸ்ட் இயரில் காலேஜ் ஃபஸ்ட் இயரில் அப்புறம் தான் ஃபுல் ஃப்ளெஸ்டாக வந்துட்டு சரி பார்த்து பாடலாம் அப்படின்ற ஒரு ஐடியா வந்து அப்போ தான் நான் ஸ்டார்ட் Fantastic. Uh, right, college life came to you. So, how did you tell college life? What was it? 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 How was your college life going to the competition and getting stage? And what was your first stage? What was it? College. My college life was my dad. First, I was going to Chennai. I was going to go to marriage and go to marriage. So, த்ரீ இயர்ஸ் வந்துட்டு சென்னையில் நான் தனியாக இருக்க போகிறேன் அவங்க என்ன சொல்லி விட்டாங்கன்னா உன்னை ஒரு கடலில் விடுறேன் நீந்தி வரதும் மூழ்கி போகிறதும் உன் கையில் தான் இருக்குது அப்படின்னு சொல்லிட்டு தான் என்னை டேடி லெவலாக காலேஜில் விட்டு போனாங்க காலேஜில் ஃபஸ்ட்டு கால் எடுத்து வச்ச உடனே அப்புறம் தான் ஓகே நானும் நார்மலாக படிச்சுட்டு ஒரு பி இங்கிலீஷ் லிட்ரேச்சர் படிச்சுட்டு அப்படி தான் வந்துடலாம் அப்படின்ற ஒரு மைண்ட் செட்டில் தான் போனேன் அப்போ தான் ஓவேஷன்ஸ் லெவலாக காலேஜில் ஓவேஷன்ஸுன்ற ஒரு விஷயம் வந்துட்டு ஒரு பெரிய விஷயம் ஏன்னா இன் ஆக்சுவலாக அது இன்ட்ரா டிபார்ட்மெண்ட் கல்ச்சுரல்ஸ் தான் காலேஜ் உள்ளார உள்ள டிபார்ட்மெண்ட்ஸ் நடுவில் காம்படிஷன் இப்போ ஆடிஷனில் வந்துட்டு எப்படின்னா பேண்டாக பர்ஃபார்ம் பண்ணும் லைட் மியூசிக்கில் பட் ஐ டென்ட் ஹாவ் அ பேண்ட் ஐ மீன் இன் அவர் டிபார்ட்மெண்ட் வி வி டோன்ட் ஹாவ் அ பேண்ட் ஸோ நானும் ஒரு கிட்டாரிஸ்ட் மட்டும்தான் ஸ்டேஜில் ஏறி வி ஐ பர்ஃபார்ம் அடியே அடியே அப்படின்ற ஒரு சாங்கு அவங்க என்ன சொன்னாங்கன்னா அவங்கள்ட்ட பேண்ட் இல்லை ஸோ திஸ் இஸ் அ லைட் மியூசிக் ஈவெண்ட்டில் ஸோ தட் ஷுட் பி அ பேண்ட் அப்படின்ற மாதிரி சொல்லிட்டாங்க நீங்கள் சோலோவாக இருக்கிறதுனால நீங்கள் ஃபைனல் ஸ்டேஜ் ஏற முடியாது அப்படின்னு சொல்லிட்டாங்க ஓகே இவ்வளோ தூரம் வந்துட்டு அந்த ஃபைனல் ஸ்டேஜ் ஏற முடியலையே அப்படின்னு சொல்லிட்டு தான் ஃபஸ்ட்டு ஃபஸ்ட்டு ஸ்டேஜ் பார்த்தீங்கன்னா பெட்ரம் ஹாலில் அடியே சாங் பண்ணேன் தட்ஸ் மை ஃபஸ்ட் ஸ்டேஜ் ஒரு காம்படிஷனில் ஸோ அப்புறம் தான் வந்துட்டு ஒரு எப்படியாவது ஒரு பேண்ட் ஸ்டார்ட் பண்ணணும் எப்படியாவது சூப்பராக நம்மளை பாடணுன்னு தென் ஐ ஸ்டார்ட் ப்ராக்டிஸிங் டெய்லி ஏதாவது ஒரு சாங் எடுத்துகிட்டு Uh, I'll, I'll practice uh, Mary, one hour, two hour. So, Abdi, it started. Super, fantastic. You said that you have a band. You have a band. You have a band. Correct. Abdi, you know, I have a band. You have a band. You have a solo practice. But you have a band. 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 How do you do that? ஆமாம் பேண்டுன்றது வந்துட்டு இப்போ என்னென்னா இப்போ சோலோனா நான் மட்டும்தான் பாடுவேன் ஸோ ஐ கேன் ஷோ மை டேலண்ட் அப்படி தான் பட் பேண்ட் இந்த சென்ஸ் இப்போ நம்ம என்ன பண்ணோம்னா எல்லாருக்கிட்டேயும் ஐ மீன் ஒரு கிட்டாரிஸ்ட் இருக்கிற ஒரு பேஸ் பிளேயர் கிட்ட இருக்க ஒரு கீபோர்டிஸ்ட் இருக்கிற எல்லாருக்கிட்டேயும் ஒரு ப்ளஸ் இருக்கும்ல அதை வந்து நம்ம வந்துட்டு என்ன சொல்கிறது ஷோகேஸ் பண்ணணும் ஸோ எப்படின்னா எல்லாருக்குமே ஒரு ஈக்குவல் பார்த்து இருக்கணும் ஒரு நல்ல ஒரு அண்டர்ஸ்டாண்டிங் இருந்தால் தான் வி கேன் பர்ஃபார்ம் வெல் அந்த அந்த அவுட்புட்ன்றது வந்துட்டு பயங்கரமாக கிடைக்கும் ஸோ அது ஒரு டீம் ஒர்க் அதுதான் ஒரு பேண்டுனா அது சேர்த்துறதுக்கு வந்துட்டு நான் ரொம்ப கஷ்டப்பட்டேன் ஐ ஸ்ட்ரகிள்ட் அ லாட் ஃபஸ்ட்டு ஒரு கீபோர்ட் பிளேயர் வந்தான் பரத் அப்படின்னு சொல்லிட்டு ஹீஸ் மை ஜூன
ஆஹ் அவன் தான் ஃபர்ஸ்ட் ஃபர்ஸ்ட் எனக்கு கிடைச்ச சொத்து அப்படிதான் அப்புறம் வந்துட்டு மேகி மேக்னஸ் அப்படின்னு சொல்லி மேகி மேகின்னு கூப்பிட்டு மேகின்னு வந்துட்டு மேக்னஸ் அப்படின்னு சொல்லிட்டு எனக்கு ஒரு ட்ரம்மர் ஆஹ் ஒரு பையன் வந்தான் சோ ஆஹ் அப்புறம் கஜோன் பிளேயர் கஹூன் பிளேயர் தீபன் ட்ரம் சிவமணி அவங்களோட நெஃப்யூ அவன் ஸோ அவன் இருந்தான் நாங்களாம் சேர்ந்துதான் வந்துட்டு ஒரு பேண்ட் ஸ்டார்ட் பண்ணோம் ஃபஸ்ட்டு ஃபஸ்ட் ஃபஸ்ட்டு ஸ்டேஜ் நாங்கள் வின் பண்ணது எஸ்ஆர்எம் காட்டாங்கூர் லைட் மியூசிக்ல ஆக்சுவலாக அதுவே வந்துட்டு ஒரு ஒரு என்ன சொல்றது ஒரு மறக்க முடியாத ஒரு இன்சிடென்ட் தான் நாங்கள் பர்ஃபார்ம் பண்ணிட்டோம் எப்படின்னா இன்னைக்கு ப்ரைஸ் யார் யார் வின் பண்ணிருக்காங்க அனௌஸ் பண்ணுவாங்க நெக்ஸ்ட் டே வந்துட்டு வி ஷுட் கோ அண்ட் கலெக்ட் த ப்ரைஸ் அமௌண்ட் அண்ட் சர்டிஃபிகேட்ஸ் அண்ட் ஆல் நாங்கள் வந்துட்டு ஃபர்ஸ்ட் டே பர்ஃபார்மன்ஸ் முடிஞ்சதுக்கு அப்புறம் நாங்க செகண்ட் வின் பண்ணோம் அப்படின்னு சொன்னாங்க சரி ஓகே செகண்ட் வின் பண்ணிட்டேன் எப்படியோ வின் பண்ணிருக்கோமே இது வரைக்கும் ஸ்டேஜ் ஏறி நான் வந்து வின் பண்ணதே இல்லை நிறைய சோலோ பாடிட்டு அப்படி இறங்கி 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 வந்துட்டு தான் சோலோ பாடினா வந்து வின் பண்ணிடுவேன் பட் பேண்டா போயிட்டு நாங்க பண்ணதே ஏன்னா ஐ டோன்ட் ஹாவ் பர்ஃபெக்ட் பேண்ட் ஒரு ஆர்கனைஸ்ட் பேண்ட் இல்லைன்ட்டு போனோம்னா செகண்ட் போனோங்க சரி நெக்ஸ்ட் டே வந்துட்டு நாங்க ப்ரைஸ் அமௌண்ட் செகண்ட் செகண்ட் ப்ரைஸ் வின் பண்ணதுக்கு அமௌண்ட் கலெக்ட் பண்றதுக்காக ட்ரெயின்ல போறோம் ட்ரெயின்ல வந்துட்டு இருக்கும் போது கால் பண்றாங்க சாரி தெரியாம அனௌஸ் பண்றோம் நீங்க எல்லாம் ஃபர்ஸ்ட் அப்படின்னு சொல்லிட்டு எங்கேக்கா ஒரே சந்தோஷம் என்னடா நேத்து செகண்ட் நாங்க எனக்கு ஃபர்ஸ்ட் நாங்க அப்படியே ஒரே மிராக்கலா இருந்தது அவரை போயிட்டு அதுதான் ஃபர்ஸ்ட் ஃபர்ஸ்ட் ஸ்டேஜ் ஐ மீன் ஒரு ஆர்கனைஸ்ட் பேண்டா பர்ஃபார்ம் பண்ணி அவர் என்ன சொல்ற ஒரு ஒரு மிராக்கல் நடந்த மாதிரி இருந்தது நாங்கள் ஃபர்ஸ்ட் வின் பண்ணது அப்படிதான் இட் ஸ்டார்டட் அப்புறம் நாங்க ஸ்டேஜ் போனாலே ஓகே நான் தீப்பட்டி அப்படின்னு சொல்லிட்டு தான் எங்க பேண்ட் நேம் இருந்தது தீப்பட்டி நந்தினி அக்கா கூட நல்லா தெரியும் அடிக்கடி அவங்களோட அந்த ஸ்கை வாக்ல டெஸ்ட் நடக்கும்ல அங்க ஃபோரம் மால் அங்கெல்லாம் வந்து பெர்ஃபார்ம் பண்ணிருக்கேன் ஸோ அதுதான் வந்து ஸோ தீப்பட்டினாலே சூப்பரா பண்ணுவாங்க அப்படின்னு தான் இட் ஸ்டார்ட் அங்கதான் அங்கதான் ஸ்டார்ட் ஆச்சு சூப்பர் ஃபேண்டாஸ்டிக் உங்களோட பேண்ட் எக்ஸ்பீரியன்ஸ் அந்த பேண்டை தாண்டி அடுத்தது ஓகே சிங்கருக்கு எல்லாம் பாத்தீங்கன்னா இப்போ அன்ரிட்டன் ரூல் ஆயிடுச்சு சிங்கர்னாலே அடுத்தது சூப்பர் சிங்கர் போகணும்னு சொல்லிட்டு சோ நான் ஒரு மூணு கொஸ்டின் ஆயிட்டு இருக்கு கம்பைன் பண்ணி கேக்குறேன் லைக் நீங்க எப்படி சூப்பர் சிங்கருக்குள்ள போனீங்க போனுன்ற ஆசை எப்படி போனீங்க அத மாதிரி சூப்பர் சிங்கருக்குள்ள வர ஆசைப்படுறவங்களுக்கு வாட் உட் பி யுவர் சஜஷன்ஸ் நீங்க சூப்பர் சிங்கர் ஆனதுக்கு அப்புறமா அவுட் இட் யுவர் லைஃப் சேஞ்ச் அதை வச்சு அடுத்தது என்னெல்லாம் மாறி சூப்பர் சிங்கர் சூப்பர் சிங்கர்னாலே எனக்கு ஒரு பயம் தான் ஏன்னா வந்துட்டு நான் சின்ன வயசுலேருந்தே பார்த்துருக்கேன் நான் வந்து ஆனந்த் அரவிந்த் தாக்ஷன் வந்தேன் அவங்களாம் டைட்டில் வந்தார் அவங்க சீசன்ல இருந்தால் ஐ ஸ்டார்டட் வாட்சிங் சூப்பர் சிங்கர் எப்படி ஃபுல் ஃப்ளெக்ஸாக யார் யார் நல்லா பார்க்குறாங்க ஹூ மை ஷுட் ஃபாலோ யாரோட ஸ்டைல அப்படின்ற ஒரு ஐடியாஸ்லாம் வந்துட்டு அங்கேயிருந்து தான் ஐ ஸ்டார்ட் அப் லேர்னிங் ஸோ அவங்களேருந்து பார்க்க ஆரம்பித்தேன் எனக்கு ஒரு ஆசை இருந்தது பட் எனக்குள்ளார வந்து ஒரு இன்ஃபீரியாரிட்டி காம்ப்ளெக்ஸ் இருந்தது பிகாஸ் ஐ டென்ட் லேர்ன் எனி மியூசிக் ஐ மீன் மியூசிக் சம்மந்தப்பட்ட எதுவுமே நான் படிக்கல ஹிந்துஸ்தானி வெஸ்டர்ன் கர்நாடிக் எதுவுமே ஐ டென்ட் லேர்ன் இல்லை ஸோ தேட்ஸ் ஒன் இன்ஃபீரியாரிட்டி காம்ப்ளெக்ஸ் இன் சைட் என்னால் பர்ஃபார்ம் பண்ண முடியுமா என்னால் ஃபுல் ஆஃப் பண்ண முடியுமா அவ்வளோ சிங்கர்ஸ் பண்ணுவில் ஏன்னா என்னோட ஆடிஷன்ஸ்க்கு அப்போவே அப்போவே வந்துட்டு இந்தியாவிலேருந்து மட்டுமே வந்து அவ்வளோ பேர் செவன்டி ஃபைவ் தௌசண்ட் கிட்ட வந்து ஆடிஷன்ஸ் அப்ளை பண்ணியிருந்தாங்க ஸோ அவ்வளோ பேர் இருக்கிறப்போ வந்து நம்ம செலக்ட் ஆகுமா அப்படின்ற ஒரு எல்லாமே இருந்தது அப்போ ஏதோ கடவுள் கிருவையில் வந்துட்டு நான் செலக்ட் ஆகிட்டேன் போனோன்னே ஃபஸ்ட்டு பர்ஃபார்ம் பண்ண ஜாலியாக காம்படிஷன் ஆரம்பித்ததுக்கு அப்புறம் தான் அங்கே இருக்கிற கண்டெஸ்டன்ட்ஸ்குள்ளார இருந்து வேற ஒரு சைடை பார்த்தேன் எப்படி பர்ஃபார்ம் பண்ணுறாங்க எல்லாரும் எவ்வளோ ஐ மீன் எவ்வளோ டெடிக்கேட்டடாக இருக்காங்க அவங்க அந்த மியூசிக் மேல எப்படி ப்ராக்டிஸ் பண்ணுறாங்க பட் நான் அவங்கள கம்பேர் பண்ணுறப்போ ஒன்றுமே கிடையாது பட் பட் என்னோட ஐ மீன் கம்பீட் பண்ண கண்டெஸ்டன்ஸை கம்பேர் பண்ணுறப்போ ஐ எம் நத்திங் அவங்களுக்கு முன்னாடி ஸோ நானே வந்து என்னை அப்டேட் பண்ணிக்கணும் அப்படின்னு நினச்சி நிறையா சாங்ஸ் கேட்க ஆரம்பித்தேன் எனக்கு வந்து என்னோட சூப்பர் சிங்கர் சீசனில் ஃபுல்லாக ஹெல்ப் பண்ணதுன்னு பார்த்தீங்கன்னா விக்ரம் அண்ணா அனு மேம் பென்னி சார் அப்புறம் ரவுஃபா மேம் அவங்க தான் எங்கள் ஷோட டேரக்டர் ஸோ அவங்க நிறையா எனக்கு இது மாதிரி பண்ணுறா இது கற்றுக்கோ இது பண்ணு புதுசாக நீ வந்துட்டு புதுசாக கற்றுக்கிட்டு தான் பண்
மக்களோட சப்போர்ட் இருந்தது எனக்கு நிறையாவே ஐ அவங்க எல்லாத்துக்குமே எவ்வளோ தேங்க்ஸ் என்னால் பார்த்தாது ஏன்னா அவ்வளோ சப்போர்ட் இருந்தது சிக்ஸ்டி ஃபைவ் லேக்ஸ் கிட்ட எனக்கு ஓட் வந்துச்சுன்னு நினைக்கிறேன் ஆமாம் ஃபஸ்ட்டு டேஞ்சர் ஜோன் நினைக்கிறப்ப அவ்வளோ சப்போர்ட் இருந்தது அவங்களுக்கு எவ்வளோ தேங்க்ஸ் என்னால் பத்தாது எவ்வளோ வாட்டி சொன்னாலும் பத்தாது ஸோ எப்படியோ ஃபைனல்ஸ் போனேன் சாங்லாம் ஒரு மோட்டிவேஷ்னல் சாங் பெர்ஃபார்ம் பண்ணணும் அப்படின்னா என்னோட மைண்ட் செட் இருந்தது ஃபைனல் ஸ்டேஜில் ஜெயிக்கிறோமோ தோக்குறோமோ பட் அங்கே உள்ள எல்லாருக்கும் நம்ம சாம் இது பண்ணாண்டா பெர்ஃபார்ம் பண்ணாண்டா அப்படின்னு நம்ம நிற்க வைக்கணும்னு சொல்லிட்டு ஒரு மோட்டிவேஷ்னல் சாங் அந்த ஒரு மேஷப் பண்ணேன் ஸோ மக்கள் கிட்ட இருந்து நல்ல நல்ல ஒரு ரெஸ்பான்ஸ் கிடைச்சிது அந்த டார்ச் லைட்லாம் அடிச்சு ரொம்ப என்ன சொல்றது அந்த மொமெண்ட்லாம் வந்துட்டு என் லைஃப்லாம் நான் செரிஷ் பண்ணிக்கிட்டே இருக்கேன் அது மாதிரியான ஒரு மொமெண்ட்ஸ் என்ன மறக்கவே முடியாத ஒரு விஷயம் அதுக்கப்புறம் சூப்பர் சிங்கர் போன போனதுக்கப்புறம் லைஃப் என்னன்னா ஒரு சாதா சாம் விஷால் அந்த ஒரு ஸ்டேஜ்ல இருந்து ஓகே சாம் விஷால்ன்றவங்கள இப்ப நாலு நாலஞ்சு பேர் வாட்ச் பண்ணிக்கிட்டே இருக்காங்க அவன் என்ன பண்றான் என்ன பண்றான் இது 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 இந்த விஷயம் கரெக்டா பண்றானா தப்பு பண்றானா என்ன பேசுறான் அவன் ஒவ்வொரு விஷயத்தையுமே வாட்ச் பண்ண ஆரம்பிச்சாங்க அப்போ எனக்குள்ளாரே ஒரு பயம் நம்ம கரெக்டாக தான் பண்ணுறோமா எல்லா விஷயத்தையும் தப்பாக பண்ணுறோமா ஸோ அப்போ அந்த இடத்துல தான் வந்துட்டு எனக்கு அனு மேம் கைட் பண்ணாங்க ரவுசா மேம் கைட் பண்ணாங்க ஸோ இது இது நெக்ஸ்ட் இது இது பண்ணுவேன் நான் ஷோஸ்லாம் போனேன் ஷோஸ்லாம் போனேன் எல்லா காலேஜஸ் காலேஜ் ஃபங்க்ஷன்லாம் அட்டன் பண்ணேன் ஸோ எல்லாருக்கிட்டேருந்துமே நல்ல ரெஸ்பான்ஸ் கிடச்சிது அவங்க வீட்டில் ஒரு பையனை என்னை பார்த்தாங்க தே அக்செப்டட் மீ சாம் விஷாலாக அவங்க என்னை ஏற்றுக்கிட்டாங்க ஒரு சிங்கராக இல்லாமல் சாம் விஷாலாக என்னை ஏற்றுக்கிட்டாங்க ஒரு சூப்பர் சிங்கராக இல்லாமல் ஸோ அது எனக்கு ரொம்பவே சந்தோஷமாக இருந்தது அவங்க வீட்டில் ஒரு பையனாக என்னை பார்க்கும்போது வீட்டில் வந்து சாப்பிடுங்க எங்கள் வீட்டுக்கு அழைச்சிட்டு போயிட்டு கேனடா போயிருக்கப்போ அங்கே வீட்டில் உள்ளவங்க அவங்க வீட்லேயே தங்க வச்சு ரெண்டு நாள் அங்கே தான் சாப்பிட்டு அங்கே தான் ரெஸ்ட் எடுத்துகிட்டு சாப்பிட்லாம் எனக்கு நிறையா லவ் கிடச்சிது மக்கள் கிட்ட இருந்து சூப்பர் சிங்கர் மூலியமா அப்புறம் சூப்பர் சிங்கர் போகணும் அப்படின்னு ஆசைப்படுறவங்களுக்கு நான் என்ன சொல்லுவேன்னா இப்போ கண்டிப்பாக வந்துட்டு இது உங்களுக்கு ஒரு பயங்கரமான எக்ஸ்பீரியன்ஸாக இருக்கும் என்னன்னா நீங்கள் போயிட்டு நான் தான் நம்ம தான் எல்லாமே அப்படின்னு நினச்சிட்டு போய் பெர்ஃபார்ம் பண்ணணும் அப்போ அந்த கான்ஃபிடென்ஸோட போய் பெர்ஃபார்ம் பண்ணணும் கண்டிப்பா கான்ஃபிடென்ஸும் இருக்கணும் அப்புறம் நீங்க என்ன பண்றீங்களோ அந்த 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 ஒர்க்ல வந்துட்டு ஒரு டெடிக்கேஷனும் இருக்கணும் ஒரு பயமும் இருக்கணும் ஸோ அது இருந்தாலே கண்டிப்பா நம்ம என்ன பண்ணணும்னு நினைக்கிறோமோ அதை நம்ம Wonderful tip, Sam. And in fact, the audience is restless. What do you think about Sam? What do you think about Sam? If you have a part of the audience, you can be restless. But Sam, what do you think about Sam? That's why we are right on a person. We are going to get some of them. In fact, the audience is going to be like, I'm going to get some of them. Okay, whatever it is. I'm going to get some of them. I'm going to get some of them. That's why I'm going to get some of them. Yes, super singer, you can get some of them. 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 And the opportunity of the country and how you are taking it forward and that's what my life flow what is your next plan? Uh, this is my last question. That's what we are going to do. Kandipa, I am going to say, I am going to say, okay, I am going to say, I am going to say, I am going to say, but I am going to say, I am going to say, knowledge is going to say, that's why we are going to say, I am 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 going to say, I should gain something, I am going to update, ஏதாவது ஒன்று கெயின் பண்ணிக்கிட்டே இருக்கும் ஸோ அதனால படிக்கணும் அப்படின்ற ஒரு ஐடியாவில் தான் இப்போ இருக்கேன் பிளே பேக் சிங்கிங் அப்படின்றது வந்துட்டு எனக்கு வந்துட்டு ரொம்பவே புதுசு ஏன்னா வந்து அது என்னொரு விஷயம் சொல்ல மறந்துட்டேன் சூப்பர் சிங்கர் ஸ்டேஜுக்கு போனீங்கன்னா வந்துட்டு உங்க என்ன சொல்றது அந்த பயம் அந்த ஸ்டேஜ் பேர் அப்படின்றதே வந்து தூக்கி போட்டோம் ஏன்னா வந்துட்டு லட்சக்கணக்கான மக்கள் உங்களை பார்க்குறாங்க அந்த செட்டில் உள்ள ஆடியன்ஸ் மட்டும் இல்லை எவ்வளோ பேர் பார்க்குறாங்க ஸோ அந்த பயம்லாம் உங்களுக்கு போயிடும் அது ஒரு விஷயம் உங்கள் உங்கள் உள்ளார இருக்க அந்த பேரை உடைக்கிறதுக்கு தான் அந்த ஸ்டேஜு எப்போவுமே வந்து ஒரு ஒரு ஸ்டேஜை வந்துட்டு நம்ம கரெக்டாக யூஸ் பண்ண ஏன்னா எந்த ஸ்டேஜ் வேணாலும் நம்ம லைஃப்பை எப்படி வேணாலும் மாற்றலாம் ஸோ அது வந்துட்டு நான் வந்து என்ன சொல்கிறேன் காலேஜ்லேயும் சரி இந்த சூப்பர் சிங்லேயும் நிறையா பார்த்துருக்கேன் ஸோ ஸ்டேஜை கரெக்டாக யூஸ் பண்ணிக்கணும் அப்படின்ற ஒரு விஷயம் வந்து நான் தெரிஞ்சுக்கிட்டேன் இன்னொன்று என்னன்னா ஒவ்வொரு நிமிஷத்தையும் நம்ம என்ஜாய் பண்ணோம் அவ்வளோதான் ஸோ அதை தான் வந்துட்டு நான் கற்றுக்கிட்டேன் ஏன்னா அப்ஸ் அண்ட் டவுன்ஸ் இருக்கும் திடீர்னு நான் டேஞ்சர் ஜோன் வந்தேன் அப்புறம் திடீர்னு வந்துட்டு நான் நிறைய ஓட்டில் வின் பண்ணேன் அது மாதிரி ஸோ
கம்போஸ் பண்ணியிருப்பாரு ஸோ அவருக்கு ஏற்ற மாதிரி இந்த பாட்டுக்கு இந்த சீனுக்கு ஏற்ற மாதிரி பண்ணியிருப்பாங்க ஸோ அப்போ வந்துட்டு அவங்க எதிர்பார்க்குற மாதிரி கொடுத்து அது ஒரு புது எக்ஸ்பீரியன்ஸ் அவங்க உட்காந்து சொல்லி தர்றது அந்த ஃபீல் எடுத்துறது இப்போ சோகமான பாட்டா சோகமா பாடுறது ஸோ அது மாதிரி நிறைய எக்ஸ்பீரியன்ஸ் எல்லாம் கெயின் பண்ண கொடுக்குது பிளேபேக் சிங்கிங்ல எல்லாமே ஒரு லேர்னிங் தானே லைஃப் தான் ஸோ அது மாதிரி தான் நான் அதிகம் பார்க்குறேன் நந்தினி <laughs> Yes, Nandri, you can join us here. Hi, Ka. You are mute, Ka. You are a mute, Ka. I am a mute. Hi. One of my friends is here. I am here. I am here. I am here. So, how are you? Super, super. Yeah, Ka. Good. How are you? Thank you very much for joining. I am really good. Thank you very much. So, you are not joining me. You are not joining me. And of course, you know, you know how many times, you know, uh we interacted romba ner romba kashtapattu nam idukku vandirukom so nee and unpaiya mattu solli aganum sam enakaga aama actually vandu akka enta one month irukum la one month ah vandute kekkranga enak full ah show na adhu illama super singer champion of champions vandu engage aayirukka so adanalae enak correct ana date solla mudiyala ena random days la dhaan vandu enak shoot irundhudu appo shows irundhudu and special shoots la irundhudu and ஆயுத பூஜை ஸ்பெஷல் அப்புறம் கிராமத்து கொண்டாட்டம் அது மாதிரி நிறைய இருக்குது ஸோ ஒரு கரெக்டான டேட் என்னால் ஃபிக்ஸ் பண்ண முடியல சரி ஓகே நம்ம தேவையில்லாமல் ஒரு நல்ல விஷயத்தை தள்ளி போடுறோம் தள்ளி போகிறோம்னு தந்தி நான் என்ன ஆனாலும் நான் நான் நடுவில் நடுவில் எங்கேயாவது ட்ராவல் பண்ணுறதுனாலும் நான் வந்துடுறேன்க்கா ஃபைவுக்கு ஃபிக்ஸ் பண்ணிடுங்க அப்படின்னு சொல்லிட்டு சாரி நான் நேற்று அவ்வளோ சொல்லிட்டு நான் சாரி இப்போ திருப்பி நான் அவங்கள்ட்ட சாரி சொல்லிக்கிறேன்க்கா ஏன்னா அவங்க ரொம்ப வந்து ட்ராவல் பண்ணிட்டேன் அவங்கள்ட்ட நான் வரேன்னு சொல்லிட்டு அவங்க போஸ்ட் பண்ணி பட் அந்த டைம்ல என்னால வர முடியல அப்புறம் டேட் தள்ளி போய் தள்ளி போய் என்னால இப்பதான் வர முடியுது பட் ரொம்ப சந்தோஷமா இருக்கு கான்ட்ரிபியூஷன் இதுல இருக்கு அப்படின்னு நினைக்கிறப்போ சந்தோஷமா இருக்கு Kandipa. So, Sam, I wanted you to be projected uh, in a different uh, manner. Like, you know, you uh, are a little bit of a kind 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 and uh, you have beautifully shared uh, first one to be very frank uh, speaker varadhukku sam was not ready actually <laughs> sam adhi nee sollirlam so that you know people uh, understand yeah. how uh, yeah yeah go ahead na na enna pannirken eni edhukku na avlo periya vishayam la edhume pannala but ennoda en life la nadandha vishayangalai share panna solli oru thanga koopuranga nenikiradhu enak romba sandoshama irundhudu but adha santhala bayamu irundhudu adha thappa solliteena thappa adha solliruknu abdine but na correct ah dhaan pesirken abdine nenikiren எனக்கு <laughs> 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 எனக்கு <laughs> 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 அதே ஸ்டேஜ்ல நான் நிறைய விஷயங்கள் சொல்லிருக்கேன் உனக்கு அதை நான் ரிப்பீட்டடா நான் வந்து ரெண்டு மூணு இடத்துலயும் சொல்லிருக்கேன் அது என்ன அப்படிங்கறத நீ சொல்லலாமே ஓ வாயில் இருந்து இரும்பமோ அந்த ஸ்டேஜ்லயே வச்சு நான் சொல்லிருக்கேன் you will go uh, you know greater heights sam kandipa in the அது நான் ஸ்கை வாக்ல வந்து ஜட்ஜஸ் இருக்கதுக்கு முன்னாடியே ஜட்ஜஸ் முன்னாடியே நான் சொல்லிருக்கேன் ரைட் ஆமா ஆமா நான் ஒவ்வொரு வாட்டி பெர்ஃபார்ம் பண்ணுவேன் அப்ப ரோஷினி அக்கா இருந்தாங்க ரோஷினி அக்கா சொன்னாங்க இந்த பையன் ஒவ்வொரு வாட்டி பெர்ஃபார்ம் பண்றான் இவங்க டீம் ஸ்பிரிட்டே சூப்பரா இருக்கு கண்டிப்பா அவங்க வந்து இவங்களுக்கு ஒரு பிரைட் ஃபியூச்சர் இருக்கும் அவங்க அடிக்கடி அக்கா சொல்றது என்னன்னா நீ எவ்வளவு உயரம் போனாலும் இதே மாதிரி ஹம்பலா இரு அதுதான் உனக்கு பிளஸ் நீ இப்படியே இரு இப்படியே இரு அப்படின்னு சொல்லுவாங்க நான் எல்லாருமே எல்லாத்துக்கிட்டையும் இப்போ வளர்ந்து வர எல்லாத்துக்குமே சரி 
எவ்வளவு இருக்கு எல்லாமே நம்ம எவ்வளவு எவ்வளவு ஹம்பிளா இருக்கோமோ அந்த அளவுக்கு தான் நம்ம பெரிய பெரிய ஆயிடுச்சு போவோம் அப்படின்ற விஷயத்த வந்துட்டு நான் பாக்குறேன் நிறைய பேர்கிட்ட இருந்து ஸோ அது தான் அது அந்த ஒரு விஷயத்த தான் சரி நானும் வந்து பின்பற்றணும் அப்படின்ற ஒரு வழியில போயிட்டு இருக்கேன் அது அக்கா அப்பப்ப சூப்பர் அதற்கான ஒரு சிறந்த ஒரு அடையாளம் வந்து பார்த்தீங்கன்னா எஸ்பிபி சார் அண்ட் அவங்களுக்கான ட்ரிபியூட்டும் நீ பண்ணியிருக்க அண்ட் அதுவும் வந்து சீக்கிரத்தில் வந்து இந்த இந்த ஞாயிற்றுக்கிழமை வந்து விஜய் டிவியில் வரப்போகுது அண்ட் தட்ஸ் ரியலி வெரி நைஸ் அண்ட் அவர் வந்து அதாவது ஒரு ஹியூமன் ஹியூமனுக்கு மேல வந்து அவர் பார்த்தீங்கன்னா அவ்வளவு வந்து ஒரு ஹம்பிள்னஸ் இருக்கும் அவருக்கு அவ்வளவு டவுன் டு அர்த் எவ்வளவு உயர் உயரங்கள் போனாலும் அவரை வந்து யாராலையும் மிஞ்ச முடியாது அந்த ஒரு ஹம்பிள் டவுன் டு அர்த் கேரக்டர்ல ஸோ அது வந்து நம்ம எல்லாருமே நம்ம எல்லாருக்குமே தெரியும் ஸோ அப்படி இருக்கும்போது ஐ வாண்ட் யூனோ சாம் ஆல்சோ டு பி லைக் தட் அப்படிங்கிற மாதிரி நான் நிறைய தடவை சொல்லியிருக்கேன் நான் தேங்க் யூ வெரி மச் சாம் அதை ஞாபகம் வச்சுட்டு இருக்கேன் நீ ஐம் ரியலி ரியலி ஹாப்பி ஸோ நா விதவுட் எனி டிலே ஐ வாண்ட் யூ டு சிங் எ பியூட்டிஃபுல் சாங் அஃப்கோர்ஸ் உன்னுடைய ஃபேவரட் அதுக்கே நீ போய் யூனோ உன்னுடைய லைக்கை கொடுக்கலாம் ஸோ தட் யூனோ வி ஆல் ஆர் ரெடி டு கிவ் ஆர் லவ் தெரியாது <laughs> 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 காட்டோட Wonderful, wonderful, Sam. We are melting everyone. That's why I'm going to be live. That's why I'm going to be a super singer. I'm going to be a super singer. I'm going to be a performer. I'm going to be a performer. I'm going to be a performer. Any time and every time we listen to you, you are melting. Da. Superb. Thank you very, very much. And the last time, I'm going to be a Hindi song. So that you know, the audience, okay. uh, Pan India audience also will love to hear. ஒன்னாரேஹ <laughs> 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 गम तो नहीं है किसे हमारे नजदीकियों के गम तो नहीं है गम तो नहीं है इतनी दफा सुबह को मेरी तेरे आंगन में बैठे मैंने शाम किया चन्ना मेरे आ मेरे आ चन्ना मेरे आ मेरे आ चन्ना मेरे आ मेरे आ बेलिया ओ बिया चन्ना मेरे आ मेरे आ चन्ना मेरे आ मेरे आ चन्ना मेरे आ मेरे आ बेलिया ओ पिया ओ पिया ओ पिया Oh my goodness, Rendu, my, 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 my
not just for singing but for your presence engalukaga vande onnoda travel naduvula you have spent time or a tea break eduthitte correct ah vande adukku vande use utilize pannitadukku romba romba nandri and lastly anirudh sir oda work panna experience eppadi undathu adu adu enna marakka mudiyada or experience enoda senior oru yeah loyala right aama jaliya undathu எனக்கு <laughs> 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 எல்லாருக்குமே <laughs> 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 நினைக்கிறேன் நந்தினியா <laughs> I would request a technical team to share Nandini's contact information there. You can share Nandini's social media handle and the contact information and she would be able to connect you with Sam. If Sam is using your program, you want to get connected with him, uh, definitely you can contact him through uh, Nandini. That would be really a uh, great uh, thing to do that. And before I hand over this session to uh, MC, uh, Dr. Maharaj, would you like to share something? Sure. So, thank you, Sam, for coming over. Uh, thank you for you know, like finally managing your uh, schedule i have a personal question for you so uh, you know like uh, to reach the level which you are you know like college or like shoots or like practice sessions or like live performance or like then you also have your social media interaction and all those things how do you work on you know, like rent angle la pappu one one it's mastery of the craft adavadhu na idu madri work panni i become a better singer enoda work la na better aagura adu or angle innoru idla vandute this is how i manage to Uh, manage my time or balance life abingirad vandute indha mari situation la vandute irukuma abingira po question mark da but still how do you manage your time that is the second part the third part is how do you then you know like connect with the audience also and uh, and the audience oda connect aara po what exactly is your uh, inner feeling ena namba ellarume vandute we are in different different aspects of you know like media industry or service industry abingira po vandute more important this one eppadi you work on in terms of becoming a better version of yourself professionally that's the second question is how do you manage different different things and get most of the things done third thing is audience connect and you know like uh, maintaining the relationship with the people who really matter that's what it is so apdi irukumbo how do you do it first first na vande idu inda ella question kume answer vandute last question la da irukku and the audience kuda connect avaradhu ஸோ அது எப்படின்றது தான் நான் ஃபஸ்ட்டு யோசிப்பேன் ஏன்னா வந்துட்டு நான் இப்போ இந்த ஒரு இடத்துல இருக்கேன் சாம் விஷால் அப்படின்றவங்க வந்து தெரியுறான் ஒரு நாலு பேருக்கு அஞ்சு பேருக்கு தெரியுறான் அவங்களால தான் ஸோ அவங்க ஓட் பண்ணதுனால தான் ஸோ நான் வந்துட்டு ஒரு சிங்கரா ஐ மீன் ஒரு சூப்பர் சிங்கர் ஒரு ஃபைனலிஸ்டா போனேன் ஸோ என்ன சொல்றது தெரிஞ்ச மக்களோட எக்ஸ்ட்ரா நிறைய மக்கள் தெரிஞ்சது நான் ஃபர்ஸ்ட் எப்பவுமே வந்துட்டு நம்ம ஆடியன்ஸ் கூட எப்படி கனெக்ட் ஆகுறது அப்படின்னு நான் யோசிப்பேன் ஸோ அப்படி யோசிச்சாலே நான் அவங்க கூட எப்படி டைம் ஸ்பெண்ட் பண்றது நான் 
மோஸ்ட் ஆஃப் த டைம் வந்துட்டு இன்ஸ்டாகிராம்லையும் சரி யூடியூப்ல எல்லாத்துலையுமே வந்து ஆக்டிவாக தான் இருப்பேன் நான் ரிப்ளை பண்ணுவேன் முக்கால்வாசி பேருக்கு எப் ஆடியன்ஸ் கூட கனெக்ட் பண் ஐ மீன் கனெக்ட் ஆகணும் அப்படின்ற ஒரு விஷயத்த பண்ண போய் 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 தான் நான் வந்துட்டு இன்னும் மியூசிக்ல வந்துட்டு நிறைய ஒர்க் பண்ண ஸ்டார்ட் பண்ணுவேன் இப்போ வந்து ஒரு விஷயம் வந்துட்டு நம்மள்ட்ட ஒரு விஷயம் இருக்கு ஸோ அது பிடிச்சிருக்கு அப்படின்றதுனால தான் வந்துட்டு நிறைய பேர் நம்மளை பாக்குறாங்க அவங்கள சந்தோஷப்படுத்துறதுக்காக தான் நம்ம அதை செய்யறோம் ஸோ நம்ம அவங்கள என்ன சந்தோஷப்படுத்துறதுக்கு நம்ம என்ன பண்ணலாம் அப்படின்னு யோசிக்கிறப்ப தானா வந்து நம்ம நிறைய கத்துக்க ஆரம்பிப்போம் அது என்ன சொல்றது ஒரு பயம் ஒரு பயமும் சரி ஒரு ரெஸ்பான்சிபிலிட்டி இருக்கும் சாம்பிஷ் அதை அடுத்து என்ன பண்ண போறான் அப்படின்ற ஒரு எதிர்பார்ப்பு இருந்துகிட்டே இருக்கும் ஸோ நான் புதுசா ஏதாவது ஒன்று தந்துகிட்டே தான் இருக்கும் ஸோ அதனாலேயே வந்துட்டு அந்த பயத்திலே வந்துட்டு அது ஸ்டார்ட் ஒர்க்கிங் மோர் அண்ட் மோர் புதுசா ஏதாவது கத்துக்கணும் கத்துக்கணும்னு சொல்லிட்டு இந்த டைம் மேனேஜ்மெண்ட் அப்படின்ற ஒரு விஷயம் தான் வந்துட்டு என்கிட்ட கொஞ்சம் லேக் ஆகும் ஏன்னா வந்துட்டு நான் வந்து கேம் நிறைய விளையாடுவேன் அது என்கிட்ட இருக்கிற ஒரு கெட்ட பழக்கம் அதை நான் ஒத்துக்கிட்டே ஆகணும் ஸோ அதனாலேயே வந்துட்டு சில விஷயங்கள்லாம் நான் விட்டுருவேன் ஸோ அதை வந்து நான் கம்மி பண்ணிடுவோம் பட் என்ன சொல்றது சம்மவ் எப்படியோ வந்து மேனேஜ் பண்ணிடுவேன் ப்ராக்டிஸ் செஷனுக்கு இவ்வளோ மக்கள் கூட கனெக்ட் ஆகிறதுக்கு இப்படி ஸோ எனக்கு கிடைக்கிற ஷோஸ் எல்லாம் நான் யூஸ் பண்ணிக்குவேன் ஸோ அதனால தான் இந்த ஸ்பெஷல் ஷூட் எல்லாத்துக்குமே வந்துட்டு நான் கலந்துக்கிட்டு ஸோ டான்ஸ் ஆடுறது ஆக்டிங் பண்ணுறது ஸோ அது மாதிரியான விஷயங்கள் எல்லாமே பண்ணி ஏதோ கடவுள் ஐ மீன் காட்ஸ் பிளேஸில் இட்ஸ் கோயிங் குட் so and i wish you more to grow even more bigger and bigger and bigger and uh, achieve 100 times 1000 times more success than you achieve thank you so thank you, sir. Oh, oh. thank you so much yes uh, last question sam adutha enna sam as an actor or sam as a playback singer ana enna abingra neera solanum idu kandipa makkalukku vandha theriyanum abin aasa padranga what can we expect from you sam vandu samave da irpa kadaikira chance correct ah use pannirpa avula da So, if you have a chance, we can expect you on uh, silver screen, is it? No, no. Actually, I'm going to tell you about my mom and dad. I'm going to dance with them. I'm going to dance with them. I'm going to dance with them. You're going to dance with them. I'm going to dance with them. I'm going to dance with them. What are you talking about? But if I have a chance to get a chance, I mean, if I have a chance to get a chance, I'm going to get a chance. Very good. All the very best. நீ என்ன பண்ணாலுமே வந்து மக்களுடைய ஆதரவு உனக்கு இருக்கும் பிகாஸ் யுவர் கைண்ட் ஆஃப் யூனோ எங்களில் ஒருத்த மாதிரி நீ இருக்கிறதுனால அதாவது தமிழ்நாட்டின் செல்ல பிள்ளையாக இருக்கிறதுனால கண்டிப்பாக வந்து உனக்கான ஆதரவு இருக்கும் அண்ட் இது வந்து பேன் இந்தியாவில் வளரணும் அண்ட் இன்டர்நேஷ்னல் ஆடியன்ஸ்க்கு ரீச் ஆகணும் அப்படின்னு சொல்லிட்டு த்ரீ ஜி சார்பாக எங்கள் எல்லார் சார்பாக நான் உன்னை வாழ்த்துறேன் அண்ட் ஆல்சோ அவர் ப்ரேயர்ஸ் வில் ஆல்வேஸ் பி தேர் ஃபர் யூ ஸோ இது வந்து மேல் மேலும் உன்னுடைய உன்னுடைய ஃபாலோவர்ஸ் அண்ட் உன்னுடைய சக்ஸஸ் வந்து பெரிய இடத்துக்கு வரணும் அப்படிங்கிறது எங்கள் எல்லாரோட ஆசை And again, I'm going to go to the house and I'm going to go to the house. Okay, thank you. Thank you. I'm going to appreciate the name of the name of the name. Thank you all of the audience. I'm going to accept the name of the name. Thank you so much. It means a lot. Thank you. Thank you everyone. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Take thank care. Thank you. Bye-bye, Sam. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you all to MC Niveta. And uh, I would request all the audience to stay back. We have one more interesting session. Uh, that's going to be and very, we, very, very we have a certificate, right? We have a certificate. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. I'm yes. adding all to Nibet. So much yes, Nibet. Oh, to you. Yeah. Thank you so much, Sam Michal. A token of love from our team. Yeah, please do accept this and virtually. And they will send it to you in email. Thank you. And over to my co-MC. Thank you. All right, I'd request uh, MC Renu to join us on stage to welcome the uh, next speaker. That's going to be one more powerful session for us. I'd request all the audience to stay back uh, for this session. Over to MC Renu. A very good evening, everyone. So we have the next speaker, Mr. Satya. He is a humanist, advocate for inclusion, educational consultant, RCI certified special and inclusive educator, and a career coach. He is on a lofty novel mission to put more smiles on the angelic faces of specially abled children. His proficiency in prose in his respective field accompanied with expertise in English is an adornment to his benevolent and humble personality. His vast and multifarious skill set includes education, leadership, public speaking, business communications and strategic thinking. Satya's Smile Institute for Inclusion is an ages an endowment from his selflessness and sacrifice the core aim of his institute is to offer befitting education and employment for people who are specially abled coming to fruit in june 2017 smile is robustly progressive 
progressing to achieve its prudent goals and objectives. You must be a Jesus, exclaimed the Christian nun after attending one of Satya's training classes. These are our little Jesus, pointing towards the disabled children came his apt reply. A strong believer in AI and cutting edge technology, he desires to exploit them for the betterment of the differently abled children. Inclusion is equal to more happiness. This simple but profound equation is at the heart of Satya's mission. With this note, I welcome you, sir. Um, thank you so much for the wonderful introduction um, to Ms. Reno. Thank you so much. Um, I am super excited uh, now. Um, it's, I don't have words to express uh, the feeling I, which, which I have now. Uh, thank you so much to 3G uh, for, giving, for giving me this wonderful opportunity. And um, I hope my uh, screen is visible and I'm audible to everyone. Yes, Mr. Satya, everything is fine. All right, thank you so much. Yes, Satya, everything is fine. Uh, uh, you can uh, switch on the present mode so that the yes. screen is bigger. Okay, yeah, sure, I'll do that. Wonderful. All right, thank you so much. And a um, first request um, to everyone is that um, sometimes um, I have my screen, I mean, uh, my computer restarts automatically if power fluctuates. So if that happens, uh, I wish that not happens. If that happens, I would rejoin in the session one or two minutes. Uh, so please bear with me for that. And uh, uh, to begin with my session, I just would like to uh, recall some of the important points which I have got gathered in the uh, powerful speeches uh, today. Um, the number one is learn, unlearn, relearn, and keep learning. Every speaker who has delivered the speech today, you know, one or other way, so they, you know, tell that um, the importance of learning, learning, and learning. And uh, um, the second one is um, be an independent and responsible learner. So it is very, very important because, um, you know, so far, we are, you know, uh, you know, it is it is very important to establish our uh, identity, uh, our legacy. Um, so we cannot be more dependent. We cannot be uh, just be in a group and then a learning um, thing. So we should find our passion. We should find uh, who exactly we are, what we can really do uh, very well, in uh, which we like it and uh, really do very well. And um, speakers insisted on the point that upskill and leverage online resources, right? See, because of the COVID came and we all now um, stuck at home and then do a lot of things only uh, online. And uh, see, this happened to me also. Before the COVID, I never used to um, you know, use online resources very much. But after the COVID, stuck at home, I started you know, exploring various opportunities, various possibilities. And uh, I have learned a lot and uh, uh, thanks to 3G, thanks to Sagit sir and Maharaja sir and uh, also all the 3G team who taught me uh, how to become digitally fit and how to learn, um, how to, um, you know, what uh, learn, made me to learn a lot of online uh, skills. Now I you know, feel very confident. And uh, yeah, so uh, one of the principles which uh, speakers insisted is uh, doing mistakes it is it's totally okay and uh, we should have a lot of fun when we're doing um, uh, mistakes uh, mistakes is definitely a part of the learning process I mean, especially when it comes to learning in english so without um, you know doing mistakes we cannot learn english and failures are good they improve your resilience and celebrate celebrities like sam and uh, you know other uh, speakers all uh, had gone through all have uh, shared their uh, stories uh, how you know the kind of struggles they had faced and uh, how they have come up um, you know especially um, dr david nair mentioned that um, you know failures um, you know that we need to face it we need to take risk and uh, learn um, so uh, these points you know are very valid are very very well connected to the presentation which i am going to give and uh, I am um, 
not um, uh, I'm, I'm not I, I didn't study in English medium school I didn't um, you know uh, attended uh, many uh, any uh, great um, um, coaching um, to improve my English I attended few English um, le- uh, coaching coaching classes but then um, I have learned English on my on my own uh, a lot of my own uh, effort so the techniques, uh, are the simple methods which I learned to improve my English is uh, what I will be sharing in this presentation. So moving forward, um, yeah. So um, Dr. Dave, David Nair, who has given the a powerful presentation, mentioned that English, uh, you know, is a, a professional language. Yes, we all have the perception that English is a language only meant for you know, academics or only meant for career. Uh, I totally agree with that. Um, you know, adding with that, we also need to learn English to, you know, improve ourselves. Um, so, because I believe in this uh, quote that a different language is a different vision of life. Yeah, it is very true. Uh, I have started learning English only because to get a good job, but then. Uh, once I started reading different books, once I started taking um, you know, my efforts to learn English to improve my communication, uh, you know, it, it slowly, you know, gradually, uh, you know, improved my entire, the whole personality. So we should uh, learn uh, language, we should learn English, not only to, uh, you know, improve in academics, uh, but even you have that intention and start learning English, it will definitely take you uh, to a greater level as a whole person. All right. So uh, I have uh, uh, got experience meeting with the different people who uh, struggle a lot in learning English and um, feeling low because they are they are not good in English. And uh, I just formulated a, a set of uh, beliefs, set of uh, mindset which uh, English learners shared with me. Uh, number one is, I am afraid of doing mistakes for others make fun of me. Yeah, it is, yeah. Um, English, like in a, in a situation to uh, talk in English, uh, making mistakes, it's a very silly mistake or small mistake, but we'll be, uh, you know, be very, very scared, you know, uh, and that makes people um, stop, you know, it, it is, so, um, People who are very good English speakers or confident English speakers mostly have learned English in the early stage. Uh, in the, their schooling would be in English and uh, they being a good um, English speaking people uh, surrounded by English speaking uh, people. So uh, it's like easy uh, in the earlier stage learning English, learning language, like the children don't mind about doing mistakes. But as an adult learner, we um, you know, very scared about making mistakes. So we need to come out of this. So we need to know consciously that, yeah, doing mistake is okay. Um, you know, we have to take it as a fun. We have to, uh, you know, uh, we should not be afraid of others making fun out of uh, me. And uh, so there's another set of people who uh, have this mindset. Say, I know these things, but when others speak, I can understand, but so I know, oh, you know, many things. I know uh, many words. I know, um, you know, grammar. I know, um, you know, I can understand what um, the other speaker uh, is speaking uh, in, a, in the situation. So, but I am not able to speak. You know, this has happened because um, number one is that whoever has uh, in this category uh, are, you know, really uh, interested or really in the uh, are really ready to learn English, right? So they have to take uh, you know, effort. They have to take right practice so that they can really improve their English. And nobody at my home, neighborhood and peers talk in English. It's definitely a, a, a great disadvantage. Um, I noticed, you know, I can, when I conduct online English coaching to others, they sit in a, a place and then they attend. When someone, um, you know, at home uh, pass that way, they feel very scared. You know, because learning to speak in English is very odd in the um, in the environment. You know, no other are speaking in English. So, with, when this person is taking effort, 
um, you know, so he feels very uh, scared or uncomfortable. Yeah, but we need to overcome uh, this situation. Um, so we need to find a peer group. Um, you know, it is, uh, it is that we have to create opportunity to be with people who are speaking in English, who are good in uh, communication. So we learn. So we have to create that opportunity. We cannot keep um, blaming others, blaming the situation. And next one, think in mother tongue and communicate in English, right? So this is okay in the very beginning level, but adults, adult learners, you know, do this mistake a lot. I know a person who equate everything uh, in English to Tamil. So Tamil is his, uh, it is his mother language. Whatever I go and explain to him, he immediately can, you know, think think about think how it is in, in Tamil, right? So one thing. English learners should understand English language is an uh, um, individual language. Uh, we, you know, it doesn't have, um, you know, complete relationship, a com a complete connection with uh, any other language, right? But uh, many people, what they do, like when they are equating everything, whatever the grammar concept, whatever, uh, you know, the things which uh, they are learning in English, when they are equating it to Tamil, they would be totally struck. And... Uh, I, I pointed out this um, feedback to that person and then he changed his mindset and he started doing better. If anyone here who is doing this mistake, who is having this uh, pattern of thinking, uh, you know, to know, analyze everything, uh, which is in English to Tamil, which is not really good, which would uh, stop you uh, to improve your communication English for, or slow downs. All right, I am better than my peers. All right, this is okay. Um, it's okay to compare, uh, feel comfortable with um, having the feeling that I'm uh, okay, I'm better, I'm uh, equal to my peers, but this should not be um, stopping your effort. Uh, this should not be stopping your uh, you know, practice to improve your English. So we, you should know where you are uh, at that stage and then start taking effort. Uh, language learning has no end. So we can keep improving. And uh, uh, the more we become better in English, the more success we can achieve, the more success we can uh, produce. So uh, language skills is uh, directly proportionate to our success. Uh, right, next one is grammar is difficult. Compare English with mother tongue. Yeah, I, uh, I also said that people who think um, everything, uh, you know, comparing English with their mother tongue, mother language, it will be very diff uh, difficult. We are making the learning process more complex. So moving on, um, you know, understanding this mind uh, blockers. So we should find out ways to overcome this and uh, so that our uh, practices will go smooth and uh, we can you know, uh, learn, learn to uh, become better in English. All right, so I have a um, question here. So uh, what does it mean by communication? What is uh, the most important thing uh, when it comes to uh, communication? Is it grammar, fluency, vocabulary, and meaning? So you can answer um, this. What do you think is most important when it comes to communication? So the other speaker uh, you know, had a wonderful session about uh, communication. He was um, from the uh, neuro linguistic background. He explained about assertive communication. So I'm just talking uh, here. Uh, I mean the very basic communication. What is communication? When? Uh, what is more important in communication? All right. I'm looking for the chat box. All right. Just give me a moment. There are 31. Okay. I have a little trouble here. In the okay chat, my chat box is not opening. Just give me a moment. What is that? Okay. Yeah. Guys, yeah. yeah. comes like meaning grammar, meaning grammar, meaning meaning grammar. These are the replies to the question. Okay, thank you so much for that. I think when I'm in the presentation mode, I cannot see uh, other screens. 
uh, so I'm very sorry for that. Yes, the most important thing when it comes to communication is meaning. All right, but other components like vocabulary, fluency, and grammar are the supporting um, or the uh, secondary components. They ensure the meaning. Um, they ensure the uh, correct meaning. So what happens? Uh, no, the basic in, uh, learners uh, who are not uh, focusing on meaning, but they are focusing more on the other uh, aspects of uh, the language learning, grammar, fluency, and vocabulary. They are more scared about this. But when uh, you, um, you know, when it comes to communication, when it, when it comes to speaking or writing or any other way of communication, what is more important is meaning. So you focus on meaning and all other aspects that definitely you need to take effort to improve slowly one by one. But uh, meaning is the most important thing that we need to focus on. All right. So when it comes to knowledge, um, the most important um, thing is accessibility. So about 25, 30 years back, uh, accessibility to knowledge is very, very limited. So we didn't have uh, internet. Um, we didn't have um, you know many uh, resources available. The only um, sources available was a library, and only few people you know visit library and uh, you know keep reading and then uh, keep uh, having um, connection with uh, having the accessibility with the knowledge. Right, but now we have internet and uh, many uh, you know available uh, many ways to access the knowledge. Um, right, so. Uh, when it comes to knowledge, uh, accessibility is important. And now we have great accessibility. But when it comes to skill, what is more important? When it comes to skill, the most important thing is practice, right? Um, I know uh, people who uh, you know read a lot of books. Uh, they know grammar very well. Uh, they know uh, you know uh, they spend a lot of time in um, um, focusing on the knowledge. But then when it comes to speaking when it comes to uh, communication uh, they are not up to the mark it is because uh, the practice is very less so the most important thing is practice um, in tamil there is a saying sithiramam kaipalakam sandhamalam na palakam so uh, language is uh, if you only read then it's like you reading a, um, a reading a um, what is that uh, a recipe in you know so, uh, you know how to make uh, something how to cook something but reading doesn't make um, you know but when you go and really prepare that food you know how it would come how many times you have to make attempt to uh, get that uh, food ready uh, uh, you know with that uh, with that uh, with that taste so it's like that so language learning requires a lot of practice Right, so uh, eighty percentage of your explicit practice gives you twenty percentage of performance. So, so from this you can understand how much practice is required. So, I mean, uh, and I also would like to emphasize the explicit practice. It's not only uh, you read it, you only uh, think about it, uh, but you need to. When it comes, uh, for example, when it comes to writing, you have to sit and write, and so you will see the result, and you also, and so you, you yourself can read and check, um, you know, how much you can uh, communicate. When you read, how much you can understand uh, what exactly you want to uh, convey to the other person who is reading. So explicit reading, uh, explicit practice. You have to literally, you know, spend time or practice um, practicing. To improve English like English skills. All right. So yeah, practice number one is that very simple. Never afraid of being uh, doing mistakes. Do a lot of mistakes. All right. And then I know people who are there to do mistakes. They only doing mistakes. They never worry about how you know correcting it. So uh, you know at some point of time because of the uh, pressure, the work pressure, the uh, environmental pressure, uh, they you know come out of the fear factor. But then they, you know, they started communicate, but they never worry about correcting it. So for for years together, they speak English, but they speak uh, English with a lot of errors. So once we started, you know, taking once we are coming out of the fear factor, uh, fear of doing mistakes, then we have to focus. We have to identify mistakes and what kind of mistakes that we do. 
and started correcting them one by one so when we correct mistakes profoundly then our performance our communication will definitely will improve all right so when it comes to a language there is a natural order for language learning so which which everyone can easily understand uh, you know, the way a child learn his mother tongue so the child uh, listen a lot from the parent uh, and other people around the child and uh, later it started you know slowly speaking and then uh, when it you know people introduce pictures and then slowly reading and then finally writing right but when it comes to uh, adult learners not knowing this um, natural order of la learning language uh, they mess up you know they straight away especially when we when we learn english they straight away jump to uh, the last two parts um, you know writing and reading we don't practice enough in listening and speaking so which but they are the very important steps so without you uh, anybody who spend uh, time to improve the listening and speaking skills um, you know how much ever they practice a lot in writing and uh, reading and writing they will not be really uh, very successful so we need to balance our learning so as an adult learner um, you know we need not to uh, only uh, go in that order listen for some months or you know only do the listening practice first then go to uh, speaking uh, so we can do a balance learning so every day spend a little time in listening let every day uh, spend little, uh, some um, explicit uh, speaking practice every day read a, a reading practice and then writing practice so when when we balance all the components of language learning it will uh, we see the improvement um, you know more than not uh, really not stuck not uh, doing the balanced learning all right um when it comes to speaking in english when it comes to fluently speak in english think in english is very important there are many people who say yes i know uh, no language uh, i studied in college and uh, things but then um, in a situation you know i am not able to speak i am stuck now it is all because uh, you know only at that moment of moment the time that they need to respond their brain started to thinking right so the thinking mechanism start to work so they get stuck so what has to happen is that one should start practice uh, thinking right think uh, you know in in a day uh, an average uh, healthy um, psychologically healthy person has ha have um, 50 to 70000 thoughts so when we are able to make the 50 to 70000 thoughts in english um then any situation we can uh, be spontaneous and then very fluent uh, in responding in, in that situation uh, so think in english is a very very important uh, practice and yeah so we should have a role model uh, we should not just compare only with our peers say that okay they are little low i am better or they are little higher okay not like that so we need to have one real great um, role model so today i have attended uh, the senior uh, neelja singh and her talk was so fluent and uh, see the way that they she explained what um, she wanted to convey in a very very uh, good manner i really impressed about the way she delivered her speech and uh, so i thought like she 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 should be my role model so we should have a very uh, high role model and then keep following them and so you know we can we can grow more um, instead of having uh, comparing ourselves with uh, immediate um, people who are not not so good in english and uh, we sh must have um, a big dream or a big goal when it comes to language learning um, so dream big and dream small is a crime it's uh, a very uh, inspiring quote by dr abdul kalam and um, dr sahid sir also mentioned this um, many times it's very inspiring uh, it it made a lot of difference uh, in me and uh, so now i have a goal to uh, clear my advanced level cambridge assessment uh, english assessment right so uh, so i would like everybody to think um, everybody to plan to 
uh, improve your english to a international standard right so when it comes to these um, international language testings they are they are basically testing the um, errorless accurate precise communication um, you know skills um, how much you are able to uh, clearly um, express your uh, thoughts in english now it's they are not looking for how um, you know how rich you are in vocabulary how how much you know um, you are capable in making complex sentences you know so they are looking for the basic communication skill all right and uh, i have attended some of the you know free uh, sessions of uh, you know uh, practicing um, english uh, for the international uh, language testings uh, so one thing is i understand that when it comes to language you know in the in the higher levels will will actually push you will actually enable you to think better and uh, they help you to learn how to process informations information which is very very critical uh, for your career success there is a higher level um, thinking right and uh, yeah so there was there is a, uh, there is one uh, disadvantage that many people have that people not people around them are not speaking english so these people should create an inclusive buddy group so they themselves you know start uh, practice uh, the simple skills as uh, uh, simple methods to improve their english even they can add small children uh, and also so they so that the learning will be more uh, very interactive um, it and the learning will be more effective and they it, it definitely would be very very fun all right so uh, there are many uh, moocs uh, mass online open uh, courses available on uh, future learn so i uh, attended these um, uh, courses and i also recommend i also uh, guide some of uh, my students to do this uh, training program on futurelearn.com so if you are uh, there are two levels which are uh, they are free courses they are very very good they they give you uh, you know activities to improve all the components of uh, language learning listening speaking uh, reading and writing so this wonderful resource uh, available free you can use it and uh, yeah so i think i am coming to the end so another practice you can have is um i found a wonderful learning resource in uh, linkedin learning so there is a, a very uh, great uh, lesson grammar foundation and english as a second language practice language every day so these are all a very wonderful uh, language or learning resources um i personally experienced it they are very high quality um, learning experience they give wonderful benefits wonderful improvements in you all right so yeah so apart from you know focusing only on um, you know, learning english only for an academic or uh, career um, uh, prospect career um, aspect so i also uh, listen to um, you know people like gabriel iglesias and uh, the series called the good doctor and the young children so this i listen um, you know for a pleasure and i recommend um you know have that um uh, you know thinking uh, have that um, mindset that english is not only for academic and uh, career purpose it also gives you a lot of pleasure and it also makes you to um, you know improve yourself as uh, you know very good um, personality all right and listen for information is also uh, very important there are many resources and uh, i have listened to dr mishu kaku and who talks about how will be the future and it's a wonderful um, uh, thing a wonderful um, uh, resource and wonderful person who is a very good speaker a very inspiring a uh, very informative speaker from him we can learn a lot uh, i think um, i have come to the it is my time to end my session Uh, but then i just would like to ask uh, the uh, mc uh, tamilarasan or uh, rehan uh, can i take few more minutes or I, uh, can i conclude it hello so you can continue for more 5 minutes okay thank you so much for that all right so yeah so uh, so these are some of the um, uh, listening activities you can do and i have some more 
I, I will just to go in a little faster. Read aloud. A wonderful, wonderful um, practice. You every day you sit, uh, you read loud uh, a page or five minutes, something like that. It will give you a lot of improvement in your pronunciation. It will give you a lot of confidence. All right, in 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 in, uh, in speaking. All right, and yeah. So one more level uh, from that is read in front of a mirror. All right, you, as you see in the picture, you take a book and then stand in front of a mirror or sit in, a, sit in, in front of a mirror and then you read, looking at yourself, reading, uh, the, uh, reading the book. It's, it is definitely a very good practice. You, many of you already know it. Like this is uh, standing in front of a mirror, mirror and then practice speaking or reading gives a lot of confidence. And all needs, um, you know, not a one-day practice. You need to do it a regular practice. Regular practice will do a magic. And listen and repeat. So this is um, a video which you can find it in YouTube called "Be Be Kind." It's a very uh, a short book read. Um, you know what uh, I would do. What kind of practice I would do with uh, my students is uh, that I would play that video, and then once that it goes. Uh, you know, a few words or a phrase, I'll pause it and then I tell my students to repeat it. So they listen when the video is on, only a, a small, and it's according to the level of the learner. I would either, I would choose small phrase or a long phrase, or even sometimes when the learner is good, I would go to a, a lengthy sent a full length of a sentence. And if they're really good, and I can, uh, you know, play the video for two, a multiple sentence and then I would ask them to repeat. So this is a wonderful thing. Uh, maybe uh, there are some advanced learner. They are already very good in English. This you can um, you know, recommend to your children or you can practice this with your children. They will find it very um, you know, interesting and uh, definitely this will give you a, a very good benefit. And read and recall. So take a passage, read a um, couple of words, uh, a phrase or um, you know, it's again um, according to the level you are. If you are good in good, then you go for a long pass, long long phrase or a full sentence. Uh, if you are beginning, then you take only multiple uh, uh, words. You read yourself and close your eyes or turn the book and then recall. So it is to this auditory drill. So you read it and you. You listen that your own reading and then you repeat it. This also can be done in a group where the other person read it and you listen and you repeat. So uh, this is again, um, you know, children would really love participating in these um, learning activities and anybody can do it because our brain needs, um, you know, practice, uh, auditory, uh, auditory, visual and all the ways that we need a practice. So only with the practice we can improve. All right. So this uh, um, this is the basic English grammar book which I uh, you know gone through and uh, I practiced it and it's very useful. Uh, and anybody um, you know I, I recommend this book to those who are doing the elementary level. So there are different levels in this book. So if you are, uh, you know, you know, with advanced level, then you can go for an intermediate or advanced level book. But for a basic learner, this um, this book, uh, essential English grammar for elementary students, is very very good. So, um, and uh, the soft copy of the book is available with me. And right now, now it is not available in the internet. I don't know, uh, you know. But if anybody would like to have a copy of this book, uh, you can. Um, you know, send me a message, I can send it to you. And, uh, you know, there are people who, you know, collect a lot of books, but they're not really open and read it. So read and practice or the exercises in the book. When you complete it, you will definitely um, see your um, English communication level gone up one more step. All right. So, and there are online um, tools like the artificial intelligence and there is a concept, uh, there is a technology called natural language processing, which is, you know, growing every day. Um, so we have online, you know, writing supportive tools. Uh, Grammarly is one, of one which I'm using it. When you type something uh, which would identify the mistakes 
uh, grammar mistakes, spelling mistakes, and things, and then it, it would help you to correct it. So the uh, interesting part is it is actually mentioned what is the error, so that you can learn it. You can learn, and you can improve your English. So um, you can use Grammarly, and uh, hopefully in few years, you know, language learning uh, or you know like using language for communication will be very easy as um, artificial intelligence technology and uh, natural language uh, processing technologies are growing so faster. So maybe in few years, um, you know, you talk that you talk in any language, and then uh, if you want, if you want that to be translated in English, which will be possible. So yeah, so it is very. It will be very interesting um, when such technology is coming up, right? So uh, thank you very much. And these are my uh, social, uh, uh, you know, contacts. And you can contact me and uh, for uh, for uh, taking any tips or if you would like to have any uh, uh, demo for the methods which I have shared. And I have also other methods. When I uh, when you speak to me, I understand what uh, kind of practices I can recommend to you. And you, you know, if you need if you need, I can also give you a demonstration for it. All right. So that is going to be a little fun. Okay. Uh, and just I made it for a fun. All right. Don't ask me any question. If you dare, send your way. All right. And just for fun, you can definitely ask me a question if there is time. If uh, the organizer gives uh, give permission, otherwise you can also always contact on all my social medias, and I, I would be really happy to help you. Sir, uh, we have a question. Here, someone was asking for a library, online library. Do we? Okay. Uh, if you recommend an online library. Okay, uh, there are many online libraries, and uh, one I would uh, I have used and I have downloaded many books is, um, you know, it's suddenly not coming in my mind. But you can Google it and then see. Um, uh, what is that? Uh, Goodread. There is a library. You good. Uh, you type in Goodread. So there is an online uh, library. Uh, you can download many books from it. And uh, another thing is okay. It's a little difficult for me to recall that name. So, but then you can definitely Google it or you contact me later. I will send you the um, online uh, library uh, okay, website. Sir. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, right sir. Now, I'm not able to. I, I'm not, I know I was not expecting this question. I'm very sorry about it. It's okay, sir. Uh, so, sir, we don't have any other question, but we have many comments that the session was very interesting and they learned a lot. Uh, yeah, right. It was really great having you here. So to value your time, uh, we have a token of love for you. Any certificate? Yes. Yeah, this is uh, for you, thank sir. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for this opportunity because uh, many speakers who, who you know who are already in the level of a celebrity, who are already uh, you know very successful and uh, uh, very uh, good in their. Uh, position and uh, in this platform i have gotten opportunities uh, it's because of uh, 3g irps and i feel you know um, included you know uh, in this platform and it's a great privilege and uh, i'm thankful uh, to all of you um, i'm really uh, thankful for your patience and then listening uh, and uh, giving me responses to my questions uh, it was a great experience and uh, thank you once again to 3G family for giving me this uh, amazing opportunity. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you, sir. Okay, so uh, to keep on session moving, I will hand over the session to our MC RK. Thank you so much, Renu, and thank you so much, Mr. Satya, for such a fabulous session. Um, they power packed the last session for the day. And of course, I would like to extend my sincere thanks to all the attendees who are waiting. Uh, very patiently here, even though we extended 30 minutes for you, uh, for the sake of you, because a lot of uh, participants are asking for a lot more questions and songs from Sam uh, Vishal. That's the reason we wanted to extend that. And also, uh, Mr. Satya was giving a powerful session now. Thanks to the audience and a couple of announcements and also a couple of clarifications. Basically, this is uh, 3G IRPS presents uh, Tamil Nadu's largest career guidance uh, digital conference. And in the conference, whether uh, Tamil Nadu or Tamil Nadu, those who are coming uh, from out, outside Tamil Nadu also, most welcome. Uh, we have uh, four more days. Uh, today is day five. Please join us tomorrow at three o'clock. Like uh, on the weekdays, we are conducting it from 3 p.m. to 6 p.m. 
maybe one of the days either tomorrow or day after tomorrow for the want of audience if needed we can also extend it to 6:30 or 7 i will give prior announcement if that happens and uh, you get a lot of uh, free certificates as well uh, to be precise uh, you get two e certificates uh, uh, one is uh, web, uh, for attending the artificial intelligence webinar you are getting an e certificate and also the second one is for a career counseling foundation certificate after taking the mcq question mcq test uh, these are the two e certificates you are going to get and the third one is free world book of record certificate you can pay the payment directly the nominal fee directly in the website and uh, you'll be able to get it in 15 working days and also a lot of you asked uh, questions regarding the advanced course for the career coaching uh, saturday and sunday we have exclusive sessions to explain now uh, about the advanced course so i would request you to wait till saturday and sunday and please do join us on saturday sunday apart from the weekday uh, sessions uh, without uh, fail please join us on saturday sunday session we are going to share a lot of things about the advanced courses and also about the business opportunity 3g me life platform and also an exclusive session on artificial intelligence as well on saturday morning that's going to happen so please don't miss any of these sessions uh, anything uh, feel free to uh, contact us through whatsapp and also our support number during the session you can post it in the chat box like what you have been doing now in the zoom or the youtube chat if you have not yet uh, joined the whatsapp group please feel free to join we have been keep on sharing the numbers the reason why we asked to join the whatsapp group several reasons one is you become associated with 3g all other further communication comes to the whatsapp group uh, regarding the session feedback form uh, regarding the agenda every day in the morning or afternoon we are sharing the agenda uh, well before the session we can go through the agenda as well and also our future events and future projects also would be discussed in the whatsapp group so that is one main advantage you are staying tuned to all the updates of 3g through the whatsapp group If you have not yet registered for the party or for the uh, webinar that is the conference, please go ahead and do the registration. Our uh, procedure is pretty simple. You need to go to the website 3gmelive.com, click Tamil Nadu, and then click register now. You will find so many options there. Become a volunteer, live stream, all those things. You can forget those things for now. First thing, what you can do is just click register now, and then you get a form. You can fill in the registration form, and it will be asking for a referral code where you can use our national leader or mission 3G advisor or Dr. Maharaja uh, score, which is zero zero two. You can use the referral code zero zero two to register yourself. Once you have done that, finally we'll have a green box asking you to join a WhatsApp group. Please go ahead and join the WhatsApp group. With that, your portion is over. After that, we'll be sharing all the updates in the WhatsApp group. That is the way you are getting connected with us. Also keep sharing these updates with your friends. We have four more days. Uh, take screenshots of the session, share it in your social media. You can put it in your LinkedIn, your website, your other social media status update, so that your friends get to know that you are attending such a valuable conference. You they they give you more respect on that, and also they can also join this. What are the benefits you are getting? You will be able to share these benefits to your friends as well. They can also join this conference because it's absolutely free. They are not going to pay anything for the conference. So with that, we like to close today's session. Any further questions? Yes, uh, tomorrow we'll be addressing all your questions. I'm sure we have answered most of your questions, but still, if you feel any of the questions are unanswered yet, uh, please feel free to leave a message in the WhatsApp. Uh, you can take uh, Dr. Maharaja's number. You can see it in the slide over here. Uh, let me spotlight it also. Spotlight that over here. So you can take Dr. Maharaja's number nine eight four triple one eight two nine four. You can leave a message to him in WhatsApp saying whatever your question that you are a part of the three G conference. You will be able to handle your queries, and also time and again we have been sharing all our leaders' uh, social media handles in the chat box. The reason why we are asking you to connect with us: first thing, you are getting connected with us. That's the first thing. Second thing, you can follow us and get to know the updates. Third thing, you also understand what we we are doing these events and what are the uh, uh, methods of marketing we do and what are the further updates that's coming over here. That way, you can be in touch with us. With that, I would like to sign off for the day. This is MC Tamarasan signing off along with the entire MC team. And uh, next, we'll play a couple of videos before we close the uh, Zoom. Up. So I will hand over the session to the technical team for the videos. And in the meantime, audience, you can keep sharing your feedback in the chat box. Of course, we are noting all your feedback.